Hello everyone, welcome back to the most recent episode of Star Trek Adventures, The Expanse, our RPG system that is created by Modifius Entertainment. Uh, I don't have much in the way of announcements, so let's just start off with the Captain's Log. Captain's Log, Stardate 8454.9.5. After an amazing concert by the Admiral... We've entered orbit of Scorpi homeworld, Arkenfall. High Proctor Weakus is still in charge, for better or for worse. Attempts to hail Julia Myers of the environmental stabilization team have not yet gotten any response. Unfortunately, this will be the tenth day that there's been no contact. Ever since the peace of the Warden tore up the southern continent, the biosystem has been completely in ruins. However, the team has reported some progress in the situation. End log. All right. As you guys are nearing the Scorpi homeworld, uh, Moose is the individual who has taken upon himself to host the senior staff for, I believe it was a Canadian breakfast? Ah, uh, the earthly breakfast. Earthly breakfast. All right. Zine finds all of you in Moose's quarters. Feel free to describe as you wish. Uh, so Moose's quarters, uh, actually very Spartan on one side. Um, and anyone with a engineering eye can spot that he has four uh, hollow emitters set up in that room. And as he's getting breakfast all cooked, he just simply says. Benny, can I get a dining table for uh, five with plenty of room for plates? Absolutely, Moose. And within a few seconds, the hollow emitters generate a an appropriate sized table and chairs and silverware. Okay, so I've double checked with Betty to make sure that none of the food I'm serving you is going to be an allergen for cross-species consumption. So you all should be good. I don't know about your individual allergies, but if you read the little card next to each of the dishes, you should be good. And if anything does happen, we got our doctor here for you. First for the breakfast is we got a nice, well, honey-glazed Canadian ham. We also got uh, what I like to have for breakfast with maybe more servings is a shepherd's breakfast. It's hash browns, bacon, onions, tomatoes, cheese, and egg. And I also got something for those that don't like to eat meat. I got us a southern vegan breakfast skillet. Oh, and a bunch of other little selections like egg rolls, and, you know, some other stuff if you need it. Feel free, dig in, sit down, chat. And he'll, like, grab a bunch of Canada? stuff. <laughs> what was that? I said, what is Canada? <laughs> Oh, it's a it's place a... of many wonderful inventions and wonderful, talented individuals. I hear their bacon's really good. Oh, it's fantastic. It's the birthplace of uh, Hawaiian pizza as well. When I heard we... that Hawaiian what? pizza was quite controversial in the history of Old Earth. Yeah, during uh, some spectate, that's actually why World War Three happened. Great pineapple debate as it were fortunately the ones that hated it lost <laughs> is that what is if that's what your eugenics war was about <laughs> that seems like a small thing to have a a war over you kidding me there's been other weirder reasons we've had wars for um well, I guess I can't really question much. Um, guess I should just help myself, and he'll grab uh, some of the vegan breakfast skill and just sort of takes a small fork full of it at first. It's just like, oh, it's quite nice. And it'll, they'll start digging in more. Oh, Captain, I've been meaning to ask you. I would like to requisition, partition, acquire a small part of the hydroponics to be a little garden. I want to cook some, well, grow and cook some vegetables from it. We'll be out here for a while. That sounds like a good idea. 
Um, if you have questions about gardening, uh, Togi is uh, exceptional with gardens. I wouldn't tell him, though, which plan to eat them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's another reason why I didn't ask him to come down because I was kind of worried that the vegan options would upset him. He's pretty open-minded, but does he even uh, have a mind? Yes, actually, quite a few. Mm. <laughs> and ironically enough, he's now over six hundred years old. But that's a story for another time. Oh, and no, I thought I was the oldest one aboard the ship. Apparently not. That's how it goes. You think somebody, you, you're always the oldest person until you figure out somebody's older. <laughs> Speaking of old stories, uh, computer security, uh, so no one can hear in. Activating confidentiality mode. Thank you. Now, with the state of Starfleet intelligence, um, I'm not sure what is still considered classified or non-classified. Um, but I want all of you to know before we get down there, uh, there was a small incident with the Nighthawk, um, say roughly two years ago. Uh, we had set up a duck blind situation and to observe the Scorpy. And uh, the head of security and myself were on board uh, on the duck blind. And uh, there was a group of the Scorpi um, doing a research project on a, uh, what are they called? Uh, the proclaimer? Uh, uh, the preservers. Preservers, thank you. Uh, the preservers a preserver monument, if any of you are familiar with that ancient race. Um, and I took it upon myself to, well, break the duck wall and interfere with the uh, testing, um, <laughs> i.e. broke the prime directive on our first contact with the Scorpy. And... Uh, I was able to help them with the project, but we kind of got arrested and things went um, south quickly. Um, I'll spare you the details again. Some of it is classified. Um, but uh, the gentleman that we are here to meet is uh, was the man in charge of the planet at the time, too. I don't know if that's going to come up, but... As I felt my senior staff that you should know that there may be some small angst. <laughs> well, that will be good to note on that. Uh, maybe I should lead, potentially lead with your permission, Captain, um, the away team down just to not ruffle any feathers. I was thinking the same thing, just on the safe side. <laughs> But I don't think anything went uh, too south that it should affect. But he may have some hard feelings against Starfleet. But what they actually requested to help, I think things should be okay. As you got it, Captain. Well, Ensign, have you had any chance to go through some of the uh, information on the Scorpy? I've been dabbling through it, trying to um, learn about their culture and their interesting bodies. I've been more working on uh, reviewing the um, process uh, that they've been doing to help with the environmental catastrophe of the volcano. Excellent. Hmm. Moose, this... Canadian bacon is quite delicious. <laughs> oh, glad you enjoyed it. It's actually real meat, too. It's not from a replicator. The um, weight allocation everyone was given for what they could bring aboard as personal possession, most of that's meat. Captain Stasis. <laughs> More just has a gigantic plate, like, heaping. 
and is chowing down. Well, oh, if you keep eating like that, I'm going to have to get you to join the uh, bodybuilder team. Make sure you work that off. I have no problem with that. This has been the sizes of plates I have had my entire life. My paternal grandfather was originally from Canada, so this is a normal breakfast for me. Good, good. And of course, the commander's walking by and picking up one of everything because, you know, he, know, he doesn't get enough of food. Um, Captain, I know that when we were back on Deep Space 15, uh, Captain Crawford had talked about us getting some auxiliary officers that were of Lasai expanse species. Uh, have we received any update as to when we'll be receiving them? Uh, Jim's note: They have been, uh, you have, or they have been on board for the last probably two or three days. Okay, gotcha. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, that reminds me, Lieutenant Lagos. Yes. We have uh, some sensitive equipment aboard the ship here, particularly my project. I need you to make sure that only authorized personnel have access to Daphne. Ah, I was unaware we were calling... I was unaware she had a name. But yes, I will. Security concerns were heightened in response to a couple particular individuals coming on board. Rest assured that they are... Both their activities as well as Daphne are being monitored. Good. And by the way, I got to finish up that stencil work on the warp core. Ah, good. Sorry about that. So, Captain, just so you know, uh, I'm a bit of an odd duck when it comes to working with uh, ships. I like to name certain aspects of especially parts that I've had a deep involvement in. And Daphne is the PDC's. And I'm naming the warp core Velma. So just in case you hear me say Velma, you know what I mean. Rough. Which reminds me, Captain, uh, after we've eaten this quite extensive meal, um, you're still due for your physical down in Med Bay. I thought we'd taken care of that, uh, but all right, we'll do that before the Scorpio landing. <laughs> and it's right around that moment, uh, there's a sort of chime in the quarters. Uh, sorry to interrupt your meal, crewman, but um, this is crewman Pimro eh, Primrose, um, your new con officer. Uh, we shall be arriving near the Scorpio homeworld within the next hour or so. Just to give you a heads up. Just a heads up, con officer. We're the senior staff. Make sure you address it appropriately. Thank no, you, it... Primrose. You just smiled at the cat like, I gotta give them some fear. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Make sure it keeps them on their toes. <laughs> Has anyone had a chance to read through the uh, technical readout of what they've been working on for the volcano? I, I have. I've been glancing through it as I've been studying the planet. I've gone through as much as I can with, you know, balancing everything else at this point. I've been looking over some, but um, engineering wasn't really my strong suit in the academy. Um, uh, obviously, I'm the chief medical officer for a reason, to uh, put it lightly. Hey, Doc, a, a heart is just a mechanical pump or a biological pump. Knowing a bit of engineering can help you out. You learn plenty about how a heart works in medical school, Lieutenant Commander. You know, <laughs> you know how a, a pump works, too, in engineering. Just hold it and give it a little squeeze. It's good. 
I'm not having you flip roles. <laughs> that <laughs> seems unethical. He'll just put out his right leg and he'll tap his knee and he's like, well, you know, if it gets the job done. Okay, good Lieutenant Commanders, let's kind of keep this down. <laughs> Let, let's keep this grudge match to, <laughs> you know, we all got our strengths. And yes, this is the same as that. So come on, guys. Can't we all just get along? Well, I mean, I perfectly like the Lieutenant Commander, but I don't see much of a point in mechanically pumping a heart yourself. We have the technology to do that. <laughs> well, back this to the topic. is not a contest who has a bigger warp drive. <laughs> so. <laughs> exactly, Captain. I think the ship does. <laughs> but no, back to the topic at hand. Going over the reports, their aquatic cleansing system and atmospheric I think they're more tied together than they assume. They're a bit behind in the well, water purification, and it's also slowing down their atmospheric purification. They just recently seem to have seemingly stabilized the seismic uh, plates that have been unrested by everything that was kind of throwing a wrench in the water and the air simply because it kept pumping out more gases and soot and ash and, you know, volcano. And the air is not being recycled correctly by the water either. It's not evaporating correct. So they're kind of having an uphill battle. They think it's two fronts, but it's actually just one. Hmm. Interesting. Sounds like they need to figure out exactly how to get things rolling in the right direction. Oh, that is what we're here for. Well, no, our mission is to find our team. That's the most important thing, is to find these people that uh, are here to help. And if we can assist them after that, that's another part. That's another thing. I know. Just... <laughs> I think it's safe to assume that since we're Starfleet, we'll probably help with the ladder as well, should we? Oh, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> any any uh, any peaceful uh, reaction to the species of the uh, Expanse will be a nice progress. Certainly. Well, well uh, Doc... I'm full. You want to get that uh, taken care of real quick before we uh, take orbit? Oh, <laughs> well, we might as well, yes. Just make sure to take five pounds off his weight. That's just the food <laughs> in the stomach. <laughs> and I have this antenna that's a little bent. Uh, maybe. No. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I broke it a year or so ago. It just... <laughs> Hasn't come in right. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, I will see you on the bridge, and as soon as we hit orbit, <sighs> enjoy your rest of your breakfast, and uh, we'll talk then. Yes, uh, captain. captain. And with that, the captain leaves the room, and the rest of you can badmouth him as required, or as desired, I should say. I like to imagine the scene closes out with Moose looking at Lagos like, so you get those calibrations done, and that's when the door is closed. Uh, As everything shifts. Yep. <laughs> All right, speaking of shifting, a decent amount of time passes. The captain gets poked, prodded, and as many fluids taken and injected as needed to pass his physical. Or maybe it's happening a bit soon. Do I have to... Do I have to roll to make sure I pass my physical? Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you want me? You want me to roll a uh, recent medicine to make sure he's actually okay? <laughs> actually, that'd be a good start of things because you might need momentum. So, uh, Chief Medical Officer, make me a control plus medicine. Yeah. Difficulty Ooh, zero. Okay. Uh, I should have should have had everyone roll a fitness security to see they waddled out of Moose's quarters. <laughs> <laughs> that much is guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, xenobiology is a focus here. 
I'm not entirely certain on that front, because by now Andorians are as familiar as every other Federation species. I, um, I guess at this point I meant I guess I meant to take xenobiology as a straight up biology focus. Yeah. But well, yeah. Biology I think you... I'll rule that biology and if you need to redo focuses, feel free to do so, but I rule yeah. biology for humanoids, exobiology for non humanoids, veterinary medicine for beasts of burden. Okay. And, and possibly cations if they're on all fours. But that's a different matter entirely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I should so. mention that one of the Lasai Expanse species is Dr. Quiff. A, um, oh, there we go. He's a Lashunt and has, apparent, has a decent amount of a reputation within the Lashunt medical community and is looking to expand his rep reputation and knowledge. Speaking of which, that is three successes. So that's three momentum for you guys. Nice work. Nice. And As uh, for Liz is sort of finishing checking out the captain, it's like, well, it seems uh, other than the broken antenna, sir, uh, appear to have a perfect bill of health and uh, turns to see Dr. Quiff. It's like, ah, oh, you must be uh, Quiff, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. And he nods upwards ever so slightly. Dr. Quiff, Captain, I must express curiosity at your... how different your form is from other bipedal species. Is the blue skin an evolutionary... Uh, a product of evolutionary, or is it simply a fact that you grew up in a cold environment and thus you have no need for regular skin pigment? My, pr my people are a proud race. We have all been blue for centuries. And as you see, we're blue like our blood. Hold up the little vial. Ah. Ah, diffusion of blue blood into the skin. Fan a fascinating uh, evolutionary trait must ensure that healthy blood gets as, uh, as diffused as possible throughout your system. And you see that he's busy writing notes on a... A uh, piece of paper by hand with a pen. Ooh. If if I may ask, Doctor, um, what brought you to the Concordia? After contributing a significant amount of medical research to the Great Library, I had run out of things to study that were well within my area of expertise, so I faced a bit of intellectual stagnation. I sought to expand my horizons, and the Federation's Starfleet uh, seems like the most uh, it seems like the most logical course to proceed. I see. So, to use um, a phrase that I believe came from Earth, though, you're looking for a uh, a breath of fresh air, as it were. He pauses. Ah, yes, linguistic database. Yes, I remember reading that. Yes. A breath of fresh air, yes. Something new, something different. The We have experience with several of the Lasai Expanse species. How, uh, or, uh, we have experience with the num numerous species in this area you have dubbed the Lasai Expanse. A little bit of an egomaniacal term to come in and immediately claim the name of something that you have created. However, that is a debate for another time. But yes, uh, a more thorough study of culture and biomedicine has not been performed on any species yet. I look forward to being the, one of the first. Doctor, you mentioned the Great Library? Yes, the Great Library is how all is a city-sized facility in which all Lashunt attempt to improve upon by adding their own uh, knowledge and area of expertise to. It is a... It is every Lashunt's Every Lashunt grows up and wishes that they could add but a single uh, book or article to it. I have a, almost an entire shelf. Impressive. Thank you. We might have to stop by our uh, on our trip out to uh, take a look at that. I'm very fascinated. As Is it? You... Oh, sorry. As well, you should. It is a very. F it is our central. Uh, it is the central ah, it is the singular pinnacle achievement of our society it sort of reminds me of 
something from, I believe it was ancient Earth, known as the Great Library of Alexandria. Um, it seemed like just as much of a marvel as what your people has accomplished, Dr. Quith, but unfortunately it um, burned down and it seemed like not much of it survived, if any. That is truly a shame. I weep for you. Uh, your spe I weep for your species' loss of knowledge. I weep that I cannot learn from it. Um, well, uh, Captain, you're good to go. Uh, Doctor, if you have any questions about any species from the Federation, I'm sure Lieutenant Krim and I can do our best to try and get you up to speed. Well, yes, I have, si I have a si several questions revolving... Well, let's start with the Klingons and their aversion to Tribbles. And with that... Oh. <laughs> I'll let you doctors talk. I'm going to put my pants on and go to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and off to the bridge, and I have a small surprise for you guys. It's a rough draft. It's not fully complete. But, welcome to your bridge. Oh. That is pretty. It's a bit understaffed at the moment, Wait. but we'll fill it up as the series progresses. We got like, oh my, what are, what are these tables at the side here? Are they just like extra stations, or? Uh yes. The this on the side are console groupings, and in the Ooh. back are stand up, uh, you know, kiosk style access terminals. Oh, oh I like, like that. And some oh, orcs is nice. the kids' table. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. you know you could say that but then i have all of this area for the sciences this is all mine <laughs> uh, and as you all sort of enter the bridge uh crewman P primrose sort of turns around captain commander uh, primrose being another uh, representation of the togalau I look forward to working with the looking around at the sparsely uh, full uh, bridge uh, five <laughs> looking over towards the exocom that's at the uh, there's extras the around bridge. They, there's extras around they just don't count <laughs> this one is just this garden is, I believe the human emotion is intrigued to work with you. Bro, um, may I ask how you adapted? How did you become biological? This garden... Doesn't really remember, but I assume it might have something to do with this sort of pointing to something that almost kind of looks like one of those, uh, those corpse flowers, if you know what those are. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's essentially like a very small one of those on their head. I assume that some of my garden had interacted with something like this, and for whatever reason, that is what gave me form. Fascinating. I would Agreed. Highly uh, intriguing. I would personally love to see more samples of you. <laughs> I, I, no, I mean, um... <laughs> this garden is confused by your inquiry. I... So is this Talaxian. <laughs> <laughs> I created Togi using a gel pack. Uh, a, a, a similar experiment was also done on Deep Space 15 that I used the research to create Togi. And I thought those were the only two so far that have gained this kind of sentience and form. 
That's amazing. <laughs> um. Okay. And Primrose will just sort of turn back around in the chair. Well, Captain, it's just I mean, like the I... Vulcans say. Infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Absolutely. Right. I'm still just kind of gawking at the thing. I'm like, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm intrigued. I dissect that in a... Nah, I mean... <laughs> uh... Let's change that train of thought as we, as you are pull up in the orbit of the Scorpio homeworld of Arkenfall. Arkenfall is a class M planet with two moons. Uh, one of them is a class D moon, which is pretty similar. To, um, it's dead. Uh, the other is a me is a geologically active moon, uh, much smaller and uninhabited. There's a small you ah you know from record that there is a small colony on the class D moon, and a quick visual inspection of the planet can tell you that there is definitely something heavily wrong with the atmosphere, where once it looked fairly clear skies, blue oceans, and lush verdant terrain with a decent amount of ice caps and terrain diversity, everything now seems to be covered in a thick layer of grey gray smog and even from orbit you can see massive um that yeah, massive centers of electrical energy shocking around the planet there are several small t uh, scorpy ships in orbit none larger than a class three ship those are the sun flyers right yeah they're, they're the, the solar sail style vessels All right. Hail the planet. Okay. On it, Captain. Uh, you you hail the planet, and uh, it is a heavily distorted tech. Or it's a heavily distorted uh, audio signal that makes it, that makes it through. Uh, visual attempt. Are you attempt to establish visual connection? But it's just pure static. However, you recognize the high, the voice of High Proctor Weakus. Consulate Greetings, City. Proctor. This is Hi High Proctor Weakus here. Who's that in orbit? We can't see you anymore. You don't sound this like one of US ours. This is the USS Concordia. We are here about the problems and our team hmm. uh, there is uh, there's either a pause or a burst of static or both uh, you uh, he responds team is we have several in custody being cared for pick them orbit re or ah, unable to reach stable Use your transporter. Watch out for... Copy? Can you repeat? Captain, I'm going to try to uh, clear up the signal as much as I can. Okay. That would be amazing. Uh, this is going to be a control plus engineering. And ship can assist with um, communica uh, comms plus engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. Computers focus? Um, I'd prefer if you had uh, communications. That would work better. Mm, I don't have communications. Yeah. I have linguistics. Nope, that work, uh, not needed with the translator. We'll have to make an ops officer for this sort of stuff, but that can be made later. Say it. You I have, have, I have a lot of things. <laughs> That's true. I was hoping computers, because I also have technical expertise. Yeah. yeah. Not going to work, I'm afraid. What is it? Control? What did you say? Um, engineering? Control plus engineering. Difficulty two. Uh, ship will assist with communications plus engineering. I'm, I'm going to buy a third and... die. I was okay. going to say, if you want to take all three, because I'd like to have no idea what we're beaming into. Uh, I'm going to take one for a third die. Okay. 
And who's got the ship? Uh, I can do the ship. You said it was uh, communications. Comms yep, yep. Comms comms engineering. Engineering. You got it. And that's only one success from Moore. Let's see if the ship can help. No, no, it does not. No, it does not. Uh, so in your attempts to communicate further with the planet, uh, you distort the signal gain too, uh, too much in the wrong direction and communication ceases completely and is unable to be reestablished. After that conversation, Primrose sort of turns around. This garden would think that... I believe, as you said, Captain, beaming down to the surface of the planet might not necessarily be the smartest idea. You primrose, I agree. If we're taking... Commander, pick your team and take the shuttle. Commander? Yep, I'm here. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. Um, Moose, um, why don't we get yourself more in the doctor? I think we might need to... I think they might need some help down there. Okay, so let me just get tokens ready to go here. So we have... We are bringing, of course, Hadrix, the doctor, Moose. Anyone else coming down? Um, I'm going. More. But the... With the uh, captain's permission, I think Primrose would probably fly the shuttle down to the surface. Okay. So we have all of you plus Prim. We can do that. And oh, that's missing a character for Gate Jumper. Who do you want to bring along? I have an idea, but cool. I want you to say it. Hit. <laughs> Zax. <laughs> of <course. laughs> Okay. Where is con officer Primrose? There she is. <clears throat> okay. Now, which sh which ship do you guys want to take down? Uh, you could take the regular uh, Type Nine shuttle or a runabout. Um, if there's a storm, well, but a Type Nine would be like sturdier for that, right? Rather than just a runabout. Um, um, that's more ash in the like I think really affecting the atmosphere it's not really a storm that I would well, say you haven't well, actually scanned the planet yet so what the heck do you know what you're uh, flying into sorry good point <laughs> yeah well, I mean you can speculate by looking but we should do that you're... before we actually fly down your ship that... literally has the talent as captain, high... <laughs> as captain let's scan that puppy <laughs> <laughs> uh, your ship uh, your ship literally has the talent high resolution sensors. It would be a shame to waste it. <laughs> Scanning now. What am I rolling? Okay. Uh, insight science. The ship will assist with sensors science. Uh, difficulty of two. Uh, sensors operations counts yep. as a focus for this. Indeed it does. Um, what's the ship rolling? Because that uh, might... Se sensor is... science? Sensor science. Okay. I can grab this ship. Okay. Okay, one from the Concordia. I'm spending a momentum for a third die. Okay. Because I have cautious. And I have nice. Three. three success. So four successes already. Are Two you... moments. Uh, yeah, I'll reroll the the okay. ones here. Crit fish, crit fish. Nope, nope. Oh well, that's fine. That roll is nineteen. <laughs> uh, you Twice. still get two successes. Oh, I should have raised the complication level. Oh well, that's oh, a shame. Well. Okay, so what I am doing, Scotty, is I am making a handout available to you called Planet uh, Readings. And you will be... That is the information that you have to give to the captain and whoever else wants to know about it. There you go. Aha. Uh -huh.
Ooh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. Care to share with the class? Uh, yeah, I was reading through it. Yeah, I know. Uh, good luck. Have fun. <laughs> uh, Captain, we're getting the readings in. It looks like the atmosphere is, well, to put it in old Earth terms, is gnarly. A um, lot of sediment, gases, sulfur Wait. dioxide, hydro, uh, uh, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, all the ides, basically. Um, up in the atmosphere, uh, electromagnetic uh, activity um, producing lightning storms across the planet. Acti transporters not advised um, due to the, the uh, electromagnetic activity. Um, the surface temperature is does seem to um, be affected by the uh, atmosphere being so thick with sediment. It, the temperature has dropped significantly. Um, there are seven non-scorpi uh, life signs detected, all of them in uh, the capital city. Um, None of the no indication whether the environmental equipment is currently functioning. Now, at a science officer, you get a free question, and also high resolution sensors get you one extra momentum. So be sure to add that. There were eleven, and not our question. There were eleven scientists, right? Uh, twenty. Twenty. Okay. Um, what should I ask? I am loving the fact that the atmosphere is so thick that is crazy with two or three c's <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> um so peanut I, I, would, I would like to point out that the momentum we get for uh high resolution sensors can only be used to ask questions oh yes that's right so you get two free questions Oh, look. oh boy. Um, so I'll just pull that out. Sorry, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so looking at the atmosphere, so this will be the free uh, sensors question. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the uh, meteorological data that we can pull from our sensors, is it possible for me to map out a safe path for a runabout or the shuttle that will land us close to the capital city? Um, if it's possible to at least get a to at least detect the airflows or the um that to detect the shifts in at in atmospheric pressure you can at least give them a heads up of a impending shift um so in other words if you choose to spend to advantage to get the momentum then you don't have to worry about the weather stuff Otherwise, it will be a series of communication tests. But yes. Could I possibly roll as an extended task, considering I have physics and astrometrics? As focus I? Mm. Astrometrics works more for star stuff, not really for planet, for atmospheric stuff. stuff. If you had a weather, planetary climate or weather conditions or stuff like that, yeah. Now, if you happen to know of a uh, support character that has that sort of stuff, then you can rope, you know, being chief science officer, you can rope them into doing your dirty work. I would like to say in the case that we do have to just go into the eye of the storm and pray, uh, Primrose does have hazard avoidance as a focus, so... That does count as a, uh... yeah? That would come in handy. All right. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the second question. Um, looking at, so looking at the data, there's seven non-scoropi life signs. Um, can we get any more from that? Whether we can pinpoint them down to, um, human or at least humanoid uh, yes, so those biosigns do match with seven of the team uh, that belong to the research uh, that belong to the researchers and the restoration team. 
Okie dokie. Yeah, mm. that's my two questions. Okay. If you have more, feel free to spend a momentum. Mm, no more yet, right now. Okay. When we get down to the reverse side of the planet and we can scan up, I might have more. Fair. Okay. Um, Commander Hadrix. Yes, sir. Have you decided on sh which flavor of shuttlecraft you want to take? I think we're going to take the shuttle. Okay. You know, leave the runabout. Leave the runabout here. Okay. So, we'll head to the shuttle bay, which I haven't updated from the Nighthawk one. So there's a stealth ship that does not exist. That's a standard shuttlecraft. Darn. Sorry. <laughs> you don't get to, you don't get to be Starfleet intelligence this time around, folks. All right. Anything So, uh Primrose, you do your standard checks. The shuttle bay is or the shuttle has someone has done their job previously and has checked off all the right boxes, so this shuttlecraft is ready to depart. I have just did the wrong thing and totally mucked up my overlay. You had one job. I had okay. I have so many bloody jobs it's not even funny. Okay, that looks about <laughs> right. Okay. And we'll just use the And you depart into the uh, planetary atmosphere. Which is going to be here. Nope, that's the runabout interior. Why am I having trouble with this stuff? Ever have a few? Ever have moments where you just lose all sense of reality? Yes. Yep. Okay. All the time. Good. Not just me then. Okay, you guys do that. You take the. Uh, let's see. You take a shuttle, which is here. And you begin to, to descend into the eye of the storm. So, um, first one, or so this is going to be an extended task to make it down without much in the way of issue. Uh, so this is going to be either con, so this is going to be a mixture of control plus con or daring plus con for the pilot. The shuttle will assist with engines plus con or structure plus engineering depending on how things go all this right is going to be a work track of 15 this is going to be a resistance of three a magnitude of three and a there's one other thing what was it it was magnitude of three Something else, something else, something else. I've already forgotten what the fourth thing of an extended task is. Resistance? No, nope. work track, magnitude. I mean, resistance is one of the yeah. things. Yeah, it is one of the things. I thought there was four. Track, magnitude, resistance. Um, um, amount of successes we need. Ah. Or, nope, that's work or track. Breakthroughs, breakthroughs. Difficulty, thank you. That's what I'm forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a difficulty of... <laughs> difficulty of... Only <laughs> Four to start with. Ugh. Okay, okay, okay. Now, and I will be a nice GM and say that the that either that uh, either the depending on how you want to do your first roll, the Concordia could assist with the first roll somehow, so long as it makes sense, you know, aiding in sensors or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Shoving them out the airlock. <laughs> <laughs> Giving them the boot. Ah, turn around and leave them for dead. You got it. Okay, Captain. <laughs> Ouch. Mm. Hurt. Let's see. Um, well, I guess this first task is probably going to be led by Primrose, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah, because it's con. Because hey, I have technical expertise that we could possibly... Tr but I would have to not be... Flat lady. 
I have flight control systems too. <laughs> otherwise, I would, you know, otherwise somehow um, the commander would assist or, you know, advise Primrose, you know, because he's also, a con you know, basically tr trained up on con. Either you can assist or the shuttle can assist, but not both. Oh, and because of which, this is a new scene, so you lose one momentum. Alrighty. Um, I think I might need to steal the, the rest of our momentum for their to have a total of four die for this task because difficulty four, unless I crit, is going to be kind of hard with only three yeah. dice. All right, so I'll have four dice. Okay. Uh, and I have two focuses that I, that apply here. I have hazard avoidance and helm operations. Okay. So. Either of those were, will work. And yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. Oh, I'll take those two crits. Okay. <laughs> There's your four successes right there. Uh, who's got the shot? Well, Two eighteens and two twos. Oh, that's a min max roll if I've ever, ever seen them. Jesus. So unless if unless either of the stats for the ship is equal to or greater than thirteen, I can actually mat I can actually do thirteen with control con. Um <clears throat> the shuttle that's the runabout, not the shuttle. Um, the shuttle will be rolling what con engine... uh, engines plus con for the shuttle. That'd be only a nine. So you're better off helping us. Mm -hmm. Done and done. Nice. Okay. okay. So we have That's five successes. Uh, so you get one momentum. And I think it's six challenge die because it's two plus the discipline, right? That's right. So six okay. challenge dice. Yeah. Uh, Currently. Do we want to use? Do we want to use the momentum to reroll the zeros? Um. We can use well, momentum to reroll the zeros. I'll lower the resistance by two. Or stuff. But like then, that. even then, we don't have enough for a breakthrough. I guess is no. my issue. Yeah, yeah. Neither way, we would have enough for a breakthrough unless we, um, unless you reroll the zeros and you get a two and a one. Mm -hmm. or two and a two. Um, the other thing that we could do is shave off two resistance with the momentum and then buy an extra work with threat. That would give us the five. Ooh, I like threat. True. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, boss. Yeah. Sure, let's give that to him. Sure, yeah, okay. I like that. Okay. Uh, because, the because, then it, it, because then it drops the difficulty down to a three. Yeah. Okay. So, if I heard that right we are going to shave five off the work track yep lower the difficulty by one or right, nope it's now three and it's now a magnitude two <clears throat> so uh you are ah uh primrose due to your species innate understanding of chaotic atmospheres being that the togalau their quote-unquote homeworlds are massive Class J planets with extremely chaotic atmospheres. This is, you know, once you've got its metal, you've, you're, you know, it's not terrible. I mean, it's a bit chaotic. Um, let's see here. 1d5. Uh, let me just check something here quickly. Can I please have a, a specialist, Zach? Can you please roll me a fitness plus medicine test, please? Oh, no, sorry. I rolled a four. Um, Ensign Moore, could you please roll me a fitness plus medicine test? Well, everybody, I'm rolling a whole nine. Okay. Difficulty? Uh, difficulty of one. And if you have, like, sound constitution or physical fitness or stuff like that, iron stomach would work. Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, you still got hey. one momentum. Uh, Ensign Moore, you begin to feel awfully queasy, uh, but you, uh, but you have, uh, ah, but you're able to power through it. <clears throat> the doctor just looks over and sees me like starting to turn colors. 
No, just okay. like another night on the promenade. Just, 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 let's. I'll take care of that if it gets worse. You look, you're okay, right? Never better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I am going to take a spend two threats since you were so generous giving me one. I am going a bolt of lightning zaps out of nowhere and arcs across the shuttle's computer or arcs across the shuttle. The shields absorb most of the blast, but it's still enough to knock the uh, shuttle in through a bit of a tailspin. Uh, I need a daring plus con from Primrose. Good. And no one, no one can assist. Nah, no one can assist except for the shuttle. Uh, the shuttle will assist with engine, with structure plus engineering, please. Uh, what's the difficulty here? Uh, again? Difficulty of three. This is part of the work track. I'm just trying to flavor, mix things up, and flavor things. Oh, All good. Right. I got the shuttle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Nothing, nothing from, from the, the shuttle. shuttle. Momentum for the third die. Go for it. Do it. Considering it's Go a ahead. difficulty. Th oh my nice. goodness. Well, that's four oh, yeah. successes. Okay. So that's one momentum yeah. right back. Uh, the shuttle ends, enters a bit of a tailspin, but you are able to uh, respond rapidly and subconsciously, somehow feeling your way through, these pa through the panels as if you have been training on this all your life, which, depending on how long ago you coalesced into this particular garden it could have literally have been your entire life anyways uh roll me some challenge dice please uh we are looking at six yep oh nice Ooh. that's seven uh, let's just, let's just use momentum to shave off resistance and yeah okay. get five on the work track uh, that's uh yep five on the work track so we're down to a work track of five down to a difficulty of two and a magnitude of one. You break through the upper atmosphere and uh, the sky's clear. So you're, wor you're through the worst of it. You are angling the ship over top of the continent that has the main continent of the uh, of the Scorpio homeworld. And you are dismayed at the lack of green these days. Everything seems to be covered in a pale white of either ash, snow, or death. Uh, barren rocks where once were once vibrant with moss. Uh, large fields devoted to agriculture are now shriveled up and lifeless, unable to support uh, agriculture at this time. <clears throat> This garden is concerned with the state of this planet. Oh, this planet is in full disaster mode. Everybody's too busy looking outside the windows. Uh, you all, uh, your windows flash up with a flash with a flare of green, and. All power dies, drained, completely and utterly. Uh, so um, either Primrose or one of the engineers need to do this final roll to. So Primrose is sort of just pointlessly pushing out a button on the console, like, "Why well, want to go?" <laughs> <Got it. laughs> Do we still have inertial dampeners? No. Oh, okay. well, so, I mean, this is like TOS. We're just like getting thrown around. <laughs> oh, yes. Everybody yeah, is being flung in a specific direction according to the um, stage director. But yes. <laughs> whoa. Um, whoa. I'm going to grab whatever railing I can and pull myself to uh, the back of the uh, shuttlecraft and. Um, Pull at uh, one of the panels to look at the EPS relays. Okay. Uh, daring plus engineering, please. And if Zax wants to somehow assist, that would be perfectly fine. Um, hey. I know my ship. 
Yeah, that works. And do I do have a focus? So I just need to see what. Uh... All right, cool. I get an extra dice. Nice. Well, Zach's not helping. Thankfully, uh, Moose is. In my life. <laughs> Your beard caught fire again. Yep, I was just about ah. to say that. Uh, Hell yeah. Actually, lightning, no. Lightning. Um, so what happened... Well, I'll well, do the success first. Uh, so, Moose, th you notice a few things. Um, first of all, EPS conduits are... They're not fried. They're missing. Second of all, all the deuterium is gone from the t from your... Uh, shuttle's warp core, and the warp core itself is also gone, completely and utterly. It does you see no signs of you know forced removal, and you swear that it was there when you boarded the ship. It now just isn't. Uh, so how... like the component itself is gone from within the housing. Yes. All right. Um, then I'm going to try and activate the emergency retrograde thrusters. Okay, um, because you've already done the roll for the test, I will call the test. You've already passed the test, so feel free to roll me some challenge dice. So two plus your engineering. So I think that's okay. seven. Uh, yes. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Zach, you were thrown so hard that your beard has caught itself inside like a, a joint between a couple panels, and you are literally being thrown around with only your beard keeping you from being flung into a wall. However, even with the resistance, that's enough to complete the challenge. Oh, is this like an extended task type thing? Yeah, it's, it's just the last roll of the extended task. Oh, miracle worker, nick of time. Ha, that works. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so, the engine, or... With, you know, only 100 meters or so to spare, um, Moose... The retrograde thrusters fire, all chemical thrusters uh, kick off. Everyone feels a sudden jolt as the ship begins to stabilize, and it takes a few seconds for you all to stabilize. And I would like all of you to roll me a fitness plus medicine test, uh, with the exception of Moose and Zach. Uh, so, yeah, Hadrix. Primrose, Ferliza, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple, but yeah, everyone who's not Moose and Zax. Hazard avoidance as a focus question oh, mark? I'll let that work, yes. <laughs> Primrose has a thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so now I need to roll for Ferliza. Give me a second yep. here. <laughs> Poor Hadrix is going to lose his lunch mm. or breakfast in this case. Uh, okay, so uh, good news is you all pass. Uh, Primrose, you succeeded the most, uh, so you will get you will add one momentum to the pool. Uh, mm. So none of you are overly injured. Uh, For Lisa, you it's a you know. It's a, yeah, you reset a broken bone, dislocated shoulder, nothing too severe. Uh, Commander Hadrix, on the other hand, uh, let's see. You know what? I'm just going to take threat for that complication. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, I forgot, Zax. Uh, yeah, you... Yeah. Can I get a hand? Uh, Anyone? No, you are You can't actually say anything because for the first Perfect. time, Zax is quiet because he's been knocked unconscious. <laughs> His beard basically acted as an elastic band, holding him against a console, causing him to have a sudden imp... What was it? A sudden percussive maintenance... No, sudden percussive impacts with his face. Ooh. I just imagine Moose is like just standing up. He was like holding on to some railings as everything happened. He was just like, I'm fine. <laughs> oh, um... I should probably... Are we, is the shuttle, like, stable now in terms of flying? Yes, the shuttle is 
hovering and slow is and it is slowly descending due to the limited amount of chemical thrusters but primrose at this point is able to compensate okay um yeah let's uh let, let's try and get a uh, zach at least uh conscious again here okay uh control plus medicine uh difficulty yep. of one okay uh this isn't as bad as uh, Sharon was. Let's see here. Okay. Um. Emergency medicine is a focus? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Nice. So that is one momentum back to you. Uh, I'll, I'll do like a very old fashioned thing. I'll just like. Uh... It's Millie's fault. How they'll, like, wake people up from being knocked unconscious. Like, I'm not sure if it's, like, rocks or something of the sort. Like, Epsom salts. Oh, yeah. That's all I felt. Yeah. Yeah, just... He'll just do that. And just, like, all right, get back up. And I'll try and make it... <laughs> I'll make it smell like burning facial hair. Just to see if that shocks him awake quickly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Zach, you are awoken. Yeah. Very rude. Is it Tuesday? Actually, it's Thursday, but at least oh, we have you back. Five more minutes. <laughs> Can we at least strap you into a chair so you don't hit something again? Did I hit someone? I I kind of poke like a tender spot on his head. You hit that. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Oh, bloody hell. Someone get me a drink to get this headache. I'll make sure to get you a drink once we get back to the ship specialist. We're not on the ship. Where the hell? We're on a shuttle. Mm -hmm. You descend. And getting a look outside the window you recognize the spire of consulate city well okay actually you don't recognize it uh because none of you were there in the first adventure never mind okay uh consulate city <laughs> consulate city <laughs> uh consulate city is an agriculturally responsible city uh built up over time in the um, middle of a temperate forest uh trees grow in, in and amongst well cultured streets uh, the grass is grass would be green and luscious and overall the city is large enough to probably house two to two to three million humanoids at least that's what it was pre-disaster now that all the trees are wilting discolored and covered in ash soot and other disreputable things uh, the amount of sulfur dioxide and stuff in the atmosphere has corroded the once gleaming uh, white metal exterior of these as to a pitted rusted color and of course you can't see the moon for shit because well it's eternally nighttime at the moment but enough uh, about oh sorry uh, before we go out and talk to everyone out there i want to take a tricorder and scan what happened Ah, yes. To our uh, shuttle's warp core. That's um, a good question. Can I want to also scan to see if atmosphere is breathable or if we need to have hazmat? Of course. Uh, so this is going to be. So uh, let's do this in two sets. We'll do the engineering investigation first. Uh, this is going to be an insight plus engineering. And if you have something like particle physics. Something along those lines to detect what might have happened. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of four. I know my ship. Uh, what does that do? Uh, when I'm trying to find a problem with my vessel, I get a bonus uh, d20. Well, you, you already know the problem. Things are missing. Um, it's the how that's... Okay. Yeah, no, not in this instance. <clears throat> Um, am I being assisted with this by anyone? Uh, if Zax wants to assist, or if you want to pull down the science guy, I th either one or the other could assist. 
Uh, I'll have Zax assist, and then uh, Moore can do his own scan. Sure. And, yeah. Okay. I just look at Zax like, come on, you're going to help with this. And I'll get... Okay. I'll... What are we helping with? Shots? Oh, is it okay if I use the three momentum for two extra dice? Sure. Sure. Okay, two extra hey, dice for yeah. you, and... Ooh, Ooh interesting. Ooh. Okay. And let's see what Zax gets. So in, daring? Uh, insight in engineering daring. for you, Zax. Oh, insight engineering. Yep. If you have troubleshooting or particle physics or something along those lines. Emergency repairs, flight mm. control, jerry-rigging. No, none of those, I'm afraid. Don't need it, apparently. So that is a grand total of six successes. So two momentum. Well, this is very peculiar. Uh, oh, wait. What? Yep. There's also the engineering tricorder. Since I'm using an engineering tricorder, I think that reduces the difficulty by one. Does it not? Oh, um, yeah, probably would. I do believe so. Uh, thank so... you for reminding me. So that would be difficulty three. So you get three momentum. Yee. Nice. Uh, so what you're able to, so what you determine is not not a. Uh, I don't remember the episode, I'm afraid, but there was a, I believe it was Voyager, where they were attacked by a group of pirates who basically used run-by transporters, that basically just beamed stuff off the ship willy-nilly. Uh, you're seeing something very similar to that due to the particle decay. Uh, looks like something transported this equipment away. Um, but you're oh. not able to determine the source of said transporter. Alright, so who is all on the mission here? Like, what, what are the... Um... Hang on, let me put you on this map, which has all the tokens. Copy that. Let me put tokens out for people. There we go. Alright. So I'm going to look to Commander Hadrix. Uh, Commander? Looks like someone did a little heist on us while we're mid-flight. Well, that's intriguingly difficult. We need to figure out where our items were theft to. We should let the ship know, have them raise shield. Uh, funny you should mention the ship, because we're going to have a very aggressive scene. Ah, uh, no, sorry. I want Moore's scan, because otherwise I'm going to forget. Um, Yay. Yeah. Uh, so, Moore insight science, uh, difficulty of one. <clears throat> I'm going to take momentum for a third die, just because cautious. Okay. okay. Um... Any focuses? Sensor operations, computers? Uh, I'll let sensor operations work for this. Probably shouldn't, but anyway. I'm rerolling that zero. Aw, but I like the complication. Okay, uh, so the mix of uh, particulates and hazardous gases in the atmosphere. It's You could go outside for a probably it's not recommended that you be outside for longer than about six hours and any longer you will definitely start to feel a severe amount of well cardiovascular degradation but it, you could go out whether or not you want to is entirely different uh, or entirely up to you guys but we're going back to the ship yay ship yay ship so you're on the bridge, not the brig, the bridge. Let's Catch see. Memories. Ah. I'm... Okay. Just making tokens disappear and reappear as needed. Okay. Where is other con officer? Because con officers are necessary here. There's, there's Kathos. So, Captain Bashir, you are busy keeping an eye on the shuttlecraft's progress. 
you see it's having a bit of a bumpy ride, but it's doing an okay job. Uh, when suddenly... When suddenly, yes, all the power goes out in the ship. Replay. All the main lighting goes dead. All the consoles flicker as they go, as they lose contact with their main power and switch over to console, uh, integrated console battery backups. Uh, down in engineering, um, whoever is down there at the moment is um, calls up and reports, uh, Captain, warp core has just gone dead. Looks like we've lost all of our antimatter. Uh, deuterium is extremely low, and we are on backup life support. Why? <laughs> we are investing. Yeah. We are investigating this pro. We are investigating immediately, and are we don't have an answer yet. Ensign, scan the area. All right. If someone wants to get Mr. Lagos or Bud, Bud's up here. He's our con off ops officer for the moment. Yeah, I'll roll, I'll roll Bud. Sure, roll Bud. Sure. Bud the Spud, RT117. <laughs> uh, uh, difficulty of... Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three. All right. And what was... Uh... Uh, this will be an insight plus... Probably an insight plus science, but... Yeah, I'll let inside engineering work too. Okay. Normally the ship would assist, but the ship is in no condition to assist. Computer? This is a... I'd prefer focus. if you had sensors operation, something like that. Does the captain okay. have any focuses that could work? Captain still probably has a pretty and darn decent science score. Yes, he has a wonderful science score still. Well, maybe it should be the captain. Like, maybe I... Eh, eh, maybe captain could. <sighs> Yeah, you. Uh, let's have the captain do the role, and then Bud can assist. Okay, there we go. Still want insight engineering for the assist. Yeah, insight engineering, insight science. Um, difficulty of three. <clears throat> Come on, baby, do me well, proud. Let's see what happens here. Two from Bashir, and one from Bud. Yes. Okay, so between the two of you, uh, you, f you are able to figure out that at roughly the same, not that you know precisely, but at the same time as the shuttle lost all power, so did you. A, it looks as if the ship was hit by a transporter beam of unknown origin. Uh, it was seemed to be specifically targeting your power systems. Uh, most notably warp core. Uh, ah, yeah. Just your warp core and all associated power systems. Chemical thrusters, <clears throat> chemical thrusters would work. And you have evasive... Th or you have... Uh, and with enough uh, jury-rigging impulse engines could should be brought online fairly quickly. But warp power is a no-go until you're able to sort out what the heck happened. Fusion reactors would be fine, though, correct? Correct. They're just nuclear. Yep. Okay. Nuclear reactors are fine. So, so then the impulse drives are still active. Correct. Yep, everything just sort of flickered, and that is how this is now. Okay. How much life support do we have available? Uh, thankfully, uh with the GM's realization that fusion reactors would not be affected, infinite. You just can't okay. go anywhere. Fast. Okay. Good to know. That would have been my first priority. <laughs> okay. So, engineering. Any, uh, we, okay. So it's just, like, comms and stuff like that are all fine. I can call down. It's yeah. just power is, yeah. We're not going anywhere. We're just, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Engineering. Yeah. Figure out what we're what's going on as soon as possible. Get back to me. Uh, a serpentine voice responds, "Aye, sir." Bef before hanging up, 
And the GM has just realized that with Bud up here, the only other engineering support character is the Lasai Expanse uh, auxiliary that we have statted. I'm going to assume there's somebody else more competent down there at the moment. Yes. <laughs> yeah, probably for the best. Anyways. Okay. Basically, all decks report in. Any casualties? Anything? Yeah. All our Lieutenant Lagos reports all decks are all decks answer no or sick bay reports zero casualties. So good. And with that, we're going to jump back down to the planet. We are going to go through a scene change. And uh, we're about halfway. Um, do you guys want to do one more scene and then take a bio break? Sure. It's fine. Sure. sure. Uh, did the captain get any momentum on the last? Uh, no. Okay. He did not. We got exactly. You got what you needed, no more. I didn't hear the difficulty, so I wasn't ah. sure. Fair. Uh, what right. was I doing again? Where are we yeah. at on momentum? We're, uh, well, once we're the going scene back to we're at three. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I just took away one for the scene change. Okay. okay. Uh, so. The Can we use that to create an advantage of having, um, since we were going down to a planet anyway, that we have bio suits or... Or at least respirators. Or shutters? Yes, I'm going to... I will assume that... Starfleet officers are competent enough to understand that, hey, this atmosphere isn't 100% safe. We should be safe. Yeah, I'd, I'd like suits, and I'd like to have um, the old faithful of uh, transporter enhancers just in the, on board the shuttle. <laughs> ah, now, if you want to bring transporter enhancers, I believe that's an opportunity cost. Okay. Which will give the you... only opportunity cost of one, Yeah, though? they're pretty basic, so I would get one threat, I believe. Well, okay. I think... I think opportunity is momentum. Escalation is when you get threat. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, if we're gonna see yeah. in the shuttle, I just I want something funny. <laughs> Moose is sitting down in the chair and he's looking at his leg, his right leg, and the foot's completely turned around. He's just looking oh, uh, at it. Or Liz is just like, oh, I can, I can fix that. I'm like, oh no no no, this is an engineering problem. He's just reach down, grab it, and twist it back. Oh. He, he just laughs like he lays his pull up his pad leg and you see it, it's a it's a prosthetic leg. Ah. He's like, gotta have some fun somehow, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, See, as more <laughs> fades outside. <laughs> Without the suit, he's just going outside. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. <laughs> uh, outside, you guys have drawn quite a crowd. Uh, judging from his your bile or your uh, yeah, from the records of the Nighthawk, uh, you recognize High Proctor Weakus. It's despite you know expecting to see it, but actually seeing it is a little bit different uh, because High Proctor Weakus is half man, half gigantic scorpion, um, and it's the halves you expect. So. Everything from the torso up is humanoid, and it's slapped right on top of a scorpionoid body. He he would stand approximately five foot two. Uh, he is well dressed, as well dressed as one can be while wearing what there's the scorpion version of an environmental suit, which is a series of heavy polymer bags with a simplistic rebreather set. So, he basically looks like he's in a glorified hazmat suit. Yeah, basically. It's a it's more translucent than that, but yeah. You're able to see his green uh, colored carapace. As he skitters his way out, uh, he is flanked on two sides. One from another individual that was recognized from the files. His... Uh, personal bodyguard slash security expert Bassi. And at last recognition, the representation the representative of their engineering guild, Ovis. All are wearing very similar suits. And they talk to you as if it's like Darth Vader, so <sighs> Welcome to Arkenfall. I do I do apologize for 
not se not spend not sending contact quickly enough our messenger ship should be reaching your station with the uh, with our status update roughly about this time <laughs> there's a rustling around indic that would indicate that he's attempting to v visibly shrug his body or his body language being lost in the suit it is unfortunate but you are here now and so we will it is with regret that we have to give up our uh, now, prisoners to you we don't want to call them prisoners he raises his hands in a uh, you know not us style gesture it's we were it's what the uh, preservers demanded the preservers and forgive me if i just didn't read my files well the preservers are they higher ups in your government or are they more of a godlike entity no uh they shake uh they shake their heads and gesture to ovis who steps forward the preservers communicate to the uh oral priests and the engineering guild through their protectorate statue approximately f uh, 50 kilometers due south of here they it uh, we were mo we were eagerly monitoring your species or your uh, star f ah your federation environmental technologies when all of a sudden it communicated to the priests that your your presence and technology were no longer welcome on our world you were be contaminants we had no choice but to ensure that you could do no further damage we regret this however it is their will as regrettable as it may be he coughs is, is it a pretty like nasty cough or is oh, it yeah. just like you can hear the phlegm um and he'll look to uh What's the engineering guild guy's name again? Ovis. Oh, Ovis. I'm, I'm sorry, you're not seeing the, his name. I will fix that. He'll, uh, they'll look to Ovis and, uh, for example, pulls out his, uh, medical tricorder, uh, with your permission, um, could I do a quick scan of you? Uh, Ovis looks to high proctor weakest who You're nods perfectly allowed to say no he nods it the preservers had not had any or have not raised any objections with your scanning technology please proceed and uh for Lisa's is going to do a quick scan of Ovis. just look for any sort of like probably obvious to me the player but maybe not to for lisa that yeah. Looking for like anything like respiratory infections or oh yes that kind of thing. Uh, difficulty of two, insight plus medicine, and your scan will basically tell you what's going on with all three of them. Okay. Um, question: Is it difficulty two because I'm unfamiliar with uh, scorpy biology? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, quick study. I ignore any increase in difficulty for that. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so then it's difficulty one. Woohoo. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Medicine. I think xenobiology applies here, right? Yes. Yes, it would. Most definitely. Just a little bit. Alright. I really want to see the scorpion the other Ooh, way around. Holy cow! Wow. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, that's three momentum. We are now capped. Yeah, you're three momentum. You're capped. So... <clears throat> I want those pattern enhancers now. <laughs> <laughs> Just a one opportunity cost. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, the... Uh, where am I going with this? Right. Uh, so, Ovis and High Proctor Weakus are both showing a severely compromised cardiovascular system. Uh, it appears to have... Well, this uh, disaster has happened at least a, about a, eight months ago or so. So they've been exposed to this toxic atmosphere every time they've had to go outside. 
and you can tell simply by looking at it that their uh, uh, biohazard systems are not as refined as Starfleet's, so naturally they have been, their bodies have decayed somewhat. Uh, Bassi is in far better shape, most likely for two reasons. Looks like she's been generally kept indoors, primarily because she's quite pregnant. Oh! 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 Um, if I may inquire, looking to Bassi, um, when are you due? Another month or so. She smiles See, despite everything. For um, anyone watching at home, please be Helsings. Please be Helsings. <laughs> please be Helsings. <laughs> um, if... Uh, I would heavily suggest that the two of you for talking to Ovis and Vuikas now uh, get inside and stay there for a while. Uh, your bodies are showing a very heavy amount of decay. And I'll show them the results of the scans. <laughs> uh, Ovis, or all three of them chuckle. Yes, we are aware of it, but what is what it is. We have to... We can't stay indoors forever. Life must go on, despite what ails us. Moore just looks over at, like, the dead plants. Seems like life's having a hard time going on. It's what we can do. We are attempting to speed along. There, Our, our engineering guilds are... And oral priests keep trying as hard as we can to unlock the next unlock the next set of technologies from the preservers in the hope that it will somehow help. However, we have had ver very little success. But please, um, you are not here to hear about our woes. You're here for your people. Uh, he nods back, his suit making the sound of. Uh, uh, parachute wrink pants. Yeah, parachute pants and a wrinkling of pla of grocery bags. And Bassy skitters off towards one of their larger um, one of their larger facil la larger buildings. I once again regret this, but I must but I have to stress that they did come peacefully. There was no violence and they have been treated with the utmost uh hospitality that we can provide. Well, that's all we can ask, so proceed, High Proctor. Mm. Yeah. The two of them uh, sort of, you know, shift weight from legs to legs, obviously uncomfortable with the pause as they wait f for Bassy to return, which she does. Uh, several Starfleet or several Federation uh, bipeds walk out in what is what are clearly um, kit bashed. No, actually no, they were taken with their has with their hazard suits. So Federation style uh, Starfleet issue biohazard suits, atmospheric suits. That's what I'm looking for. And uh, you rec uh, quick tricorder scan indicates that yes, they are indeed several of the missing scientists, seven of the missing 20. Uh, the person who appears to be in uh, ranking charge uh, pings on your tricorder as Dr. Cochran. No relation. <laughs> Is that what he says every time? <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I, will, I walk up towards Dr. Dr. Cochran and I say, Doctor, can you root Give, give a report. Uh, you can see his smile through the faceplate. He comes out and actually hugs you. And laughs. Uh, once uh, your your adaptive comm units pay, uh, align to the frequencies they use. <sighs> it's... We had we had given up hope. It was... Look, we're, we're not you. We're, do, we're scientists, engineers. We're not used to this whole being taken prisoner thing. They were very amicable. 
we were making great progress. The skies were clear, er, the water was getting was being worked on. We were about to start the region. we were about to start the first seed of flora reseeding, and then then they all showed up at our then they all showed up at our external base uh, at Sea Base One. It took us prisoner. We couldn't fight back. We we have no anyway. Sorry, I'm babbling. <clears throat> There are seven of us here, sir. Um, they've been treating us well. I can say that we have been treated with respect, and I wish them no ill will. They're obviously following whatever magical vo whatever magical conjured belief they choose to believe in that drives their society. Where are the remaining thirteen? Not sure, sir. They were. Uh, they were at terraforming base alpha but by the time the score but the scorpy were the scorpy said there reported that they weren't there i he, they shake their i have no idea sir hmm interesting um doctor why don't you take yourself and the rest of the um crew into our shuttle and Stay there for the moment being. Um, Mike, come and talk to you here in a moment after we talk to the High Proctor. All right. Yeah. He heads away, uh, make sure, making sure that his uh, frequency isn't the same as the uh, High Proctor Weakus and the Scorpy use. You can't help but hear him say something along the lines of backwards primitives be believing an obelisk over their own damn common sense. I heard that. I'm not talking about you, sir. Just, and I know damn well who you're talking about. He will. He just realizes that. Oh yeah, I, they heard me, and then he shuffles off back into the shuttle and disappears. And uh, before we continue here, uh, for Lisa's going to go into the shuttle and grab like. Uh, some basic, like, antibiotics and stuff. And we'll, if uh, the High Proctor and Ovis will accept them, he'll walk them over to the two individuals, just like, um, this won't cure what's going on, but it should at least help uh, stave off the nasty coughs that you will probably encounter later. Uh, Weakus takes the I guess the uh, sound, the vi the vials, uh, pass them to Ovis, who pulls out something that looks like a combination of a wind gauge meter and a clockwork uh, dial, and scans them. It makes a very loud. Uh, well, it sounds a lot like the uh, original TOS era tricorders. Okay. He looks to the proctor. Yes, these are preserver approved. Engineer, ah, uh, the engineering guild. Are approves its use, and I shall bring them to medical for dispersion. And with that, he'll saunter away. Well, the commander then decides to walk closer to the High Proctor and basically say, okay, High Proctor, so we have have our people, but what can we do for your people? High Proctor, High Proctor Weakus looks back and forth. Look, between you and me, this is. Look, I'm well. Uh, I'm very much aware that our ecosystem is failing miserably. Your techno, your technology, and your team's expertise has proven invaluable for keeping us alive. And over the last few months, we have noticed a steady improvement of weather conditions stabilizing. We were looking forward to planting fresh harvests again come springtime. However, the oral priests have taken the... However, with... Ah, sorry. <clears throat> However, with the Preserver's Obelisk's new commandments, the oral priests have become a lot more militant in preserving our society. They are, cl they are claiming and that... Uh, outside technology is becoming a pox and a crutch 
and that we if we are to unlock this next level of technology it has to be on our own more is going to step up uh to the commander uh high proctor has the preserver said anything about external people helping to unlock it following your methods but uh going to the obelisk and seeing if we can assist in the advancement of your own technology i had asked the the your representative teams to assist however they have they said that they were under strict directives not to interfere however i'd be more than happy to have one of our oral priests take you to and take you for an investigation more we'll look at the commander I'm I'm going to look back at more kind of nod my head and I'm going to be like yeah an investigation I think that would be something we could be more than willing to assist I have background in uh culture as well as linguistics i might be able to even help uh translate some of the information on the obelisk weakest jumps up and down which is very surprising considering their spindly legs uh he is uh ah, his, his uh claws attached to his uh scorpion body click click with enthusiasm splendid splendid yes i believe that is for the best you will find our oral priests already there. I shall bring. I shall summon a truck. Moose is just going to move over to the commander. Like, it's a shame they don't want any outside tech really helping them. We could um, use a dry dock method of the the ship to construct a few weather control relays. Well, we'll. I'm interested to see what, how they're translating. Uh, I've done projects on preserver language that we've uncovered and helped um, translate things. It'll be interesting to see if what I can translate here. Not to mention we can see what's really going on. Why did something cause such a strict change in things almost instantly also in my same train of thought now if the preservers are a bunch of pre-set up programs or whatever they may be it may be as simple as a ship going into red alert Conditions or, an outside, or an outside influence acting as the preservers. Okay. Well, well, I say we go find out. All right. So is everyone going, or is someone staying with the shuttle? Or um, do you want to risk the shuttle in its current condition? I'll stay um, with the shuttle. Okay. I'd stay from Rosa probably stay with the shuttle, too, because, you know, thing's going to need a pilot, so... Well, it's currently dead, but yes. You never know when. Yeah. Oh, if Primrose is staying, then, then I, I won't. Too bad. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, the lot of you hop on board a wide flatbed uh, motor vehicle, which putts and sputters at a pretty good pace. Um, it, we're not talking, you know, completely backwards technology here. It's roughly along the lines of a modified semi-cab large flatbed for you all to or a large flatbed that has been converted into a primitive uh, atmospheric uh, cl uh, a clean air environment for you all to sit in with and able to breathe normal oxygen you rumble and bump looking outside admiring the desolate views the gray skies and uh, the gray ground and oh look gray plants and eventually... You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely shade of gray. Yeah. And eventually you come to the obelisk. <clears throat> you wind and weave oh. through a 
a forest that it has obviously seen better days until you come to a clearing. The truck stops at the clearing and the driver motions so that it's time to disembark. Uh, is you, there, go ahead. Is there an opportunity cost for phaser type 2? Uh, not for type 2, no. Alright. Yeah. Type, if you want type 3, then we start talking threat, but type 1s right. and or type 2s are perfectly fine. Uh, uh, what was once a field of verdant green grass is now basically scarred dust. Uh, you can see several pockmarks where Scorpi have moved in single file to hide their numbers. And a large circle of ash has been in, has been uh, dug up around the Preserver Obelisk. Uh, you see three figures uh, busy around the obelisk. And as you get closer, your comms, uh, your comms naturally find the frequencies that they're using. And you can see that what they're doing is a mixture of... Or they're singing a mixture of prayer and alongside various formula. Uh, Dr. Forliza, you recognize them attempting to recite uh, biological sequences. Uh, Ensign Moore, you can sense a smattering of uh, physics and astrophysics. And Mr. Reinhardt, you can un your B ah, you understand the and, and Zach's. You understand the uh, how they are beginning. They're reciting the laws of, you know, energy consumption and nuclear fusion, that sort of stuff. It, this might seem like an oddly specific question, but I just want to ask: uh, with the medical stuff they're talking about, it does does it seem like it's going in a certain order, or is it just random? Ah. Uh. <clears throat> Um, this is that would be an insight medicine with a difficulty of three. Ooh, good. Um, and, uh, if you have, um, let's see, something along the lines of chemistry or pharmaceutical knowledge, that sort of thing. Uh, he does not have that as a focus, but, um, Seem insight medicine. Oh, sure. Let's do this. Uh, I'll pop a determination. Okay. We also have six momentum. Yeah. yeah. But... Oh, that's true. Um, I'll take three momentum for two extra dice. Then. Okay. And <clears throat> I do not have a focus here, so let's just see where it goes. Yeah. Well, that's uh, three successes. Nice. That's what you needed. Huzzah. Okay, so, um, based on what you're over here, based on what you're hearing as you approach, it sounds like the ke the chemical formulas they are attempting to, or they're parlaying, uh, bear a strong resemblance to one of the monumental breakthroughs in Federation, or Starfleet medicine medical technology, and that is one of a um, quote-unquote universal vaccine. Obviously, you can't vaccinate everything universally, but the the theory is with a strong base, uh, vaccinations, you know, a couple tweaks to the genetic profile here, 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 and you can get a vaccination going much quicker than what we're doing in, with, you know, Earth technology these days. Right. Uh, they're not getting it right, but you're able to understand part of it. Uh, meanwhile, huh. meanwhile, Moose, uh, actually almost everyone's it, able to understand for, this one. But For Lisa being part of mm -hmm. you see a little bit of that Denobulan smile start to creep through, but... <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, the rest of you, actually, even for Lisa, because you probably did Starship Operations 101 in the Academy, uh, they are attempting to recite two very, very important um, pieces of information. Uh, one is the technology required to mix matter and antimatter. The other is the, the physics 
uh, the astrophysics required to enter warp speed. And they're getting them both completely wrong. But on that note, we are going to take ourselves a bio break. And let's be back here in, oh, about, uh, is 10 minutes enough? Oh, yeah. yeah. Works for me. Okay, let's be back at top of the hour. Alrighty. All right. Sounds Talk good. To you soon. And we are back. So, uh, to sum up, you have come across the uh, Preserver Obelisk. You see the oral priests chanting. I um, chanting formulaic, uh, a mixture of physics, physics blueprints or physics concepts, uh, bio, biology, and prayers at this obelisk in an attempt to answer well whatever it wants. And they're not doing a complete job of it. Um, they stop as you, as they see you approach. Uh, a dark-skinned one who appears to be their quote-unquote leader uh, uh, skitters forward. Uh, you can see that his hazmat suit has been decorated in ornate, in ornate uh, line designs. At first, you think they're ceremonial, and then you realize, oh no, those are blueprints. And they appear to take blueprints. Uh, the blueprint in particular appears to be that of a complex wiring diagram to something. But he seems very proud of it. So, you know. Uh, That's some very interesting decoration that you have. More from more outsiders. He scowl. Or you can see his scowl and the uh, display emanates from his suit is impossible to filter out with your filtration systems. <laughs> haven't Starfleet... Haven't, haven't we been clear enough? Your presence is not welcome on this world anymore. Well, don't you want help in translating the preservers? We are attempting... We are attempting to... Uh, we are attempting to... Uh, Give the preservers what they what they want in order for it to be rewarded. The sh oh. Well, for starters, that uh, that medical formula that you've been chanting um, it's in the wrong order. He uh, looks up at you. Um, you could see that his uh. Uh, his brown carapace and the the tail stinger, even though the stinger has been, or you're, you're able to see that the stinger has been removed and has been replaced with a uh, an old-fashioned style gas lamp. But it takes the uh, a bit of an aggressive posture. We were. That was our suspicion. However, the medical guild has insisted we try it. We have tried it and we have failed. I mean, if you want help, I can simply give you the right order of it. I also have backgrounds in linguistics, specifically um, doing stuff with Preserver, um, as well as other ancient style of scripts. I can help to translate what's on the obelisk here. Hmm. All we are here to do is help. Very well. They. Uh, he turns his uh, tail to you and sc scutters back to his lesser to his lesser priests, and they all uh, they all physically disconnect their comms remove their heads, or not remove their heads, remove their <laughs> helms. Oh, the... God, the horror! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the planet of the undead half-scorpion people. Ooh, I like this idea for a yes. horror game. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right, we're called Cthulhu now. <clears throat> no. Um, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, uh, sanity. Yeah. Oh, it left a long time ago. Anyway, yes, it did. <laughs> all three of them begin to converse in whispers. 
that you are. Do unable. I see their? Uh, can I see like their mouth? Uh, you can see two of their mouths. Yes. Can I try to read their lips? Ooh. Uh, sure. Uh, let's do. Um, probably something along the line of insight plus con. I think that's a good one. Yes. Let's do insight con. Uh, difficulty of two. No, let's do difficulty three. All right. I do have my linguistics focus. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to burn my, uh, determination. Either Uh, I've got this or many perspectives, more knowledge. Okay. (laughs) I got this. Uh, That's a... I... Such a, it's such a good value. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so spend that. I should also mention that this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum anyway. So, yep. Cool. I'll change that. Oops. As I drop it off the page. It's all good. He got this. I've got this. I already so it gives have me ideas an... how to use that. <laughs> um, yep. Uh, so using that for an auto crit. Uh, so that's four successes. So I get one momentum, nice. and then I re- have uh, untapped potential. Ah, so you get to roll oh, your dice. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I forgot to put that macro in my bar. There it goes. Mm. <clears throat> I don't get it back. Bummer. Okay. It was worth a shot. Yep. Uh, so it is difficult because you're used, you know, you're used to the trans. You're used to the translator, you know, auto-translating what they say. So not only are you having to read lips, you're also having to formulate those lip movements into an alien sound and work the linguistics backwards from there. However, you got this. (laughs) Uh, So after a little bit of time, you can see that there's a bit of a heated debate. Um, So Cathris and Jacarnus, or Jacarus... Uh, appear to be fully in support of outsiders' assistance. And they believe that with the... of uh, that this could be kept, quote, in the priesthood. And it, the priesthood could save face by bringing back the... Uh, whatever technologies or formulas are offered by, this, by the preservers. And you know, claim that this was their victory and that the outsider's meddling could be minimized. Uh, Virilin, while you're not able to directly see his face, is you're able to read his body language well enough that he is staunchly opposed to this. Uh, the Scorpi people should uh, overcome the... Uh, should uh, meet the challenge of the preservers on their own terms. And... They have made it this far without cheating, and they will continue to do so. Even if, and he coughs up a bloody amount of mucus, even if their their species is uh, heavily wounded in the attempt. So, I uh, translate that to... uh everyone around me um and then i'll step forward and go we're only here to try to help you guys Uh, virilin turns around still um unmasked we do not need we we have neither asked for nor require your assistance and he continues to cough we have been we have gotten this far on our own. The preservers gave us nothing but a chance, and we have taken that chance and have run with it for centuries. And the coughing uh, continues to get worse. I have something I want to point out to you. You're coughing yourself almost to death. What if the preservers want us to come down to assist you, to show you that there is more than just your plan you can be a part of? What if this is a test? Uh, he puts the uh, he reseals the helmet. There's an audible hiss. Uh, the coughing doesn't stop for another twenty seconds or so, leaving a mist of 
red and green on the vis on the interior of the visor. It appears though that they have planned for this, and a small little squeegee or automated windshield wiper <laughs> takes over. <laughs> It asks for five dollars afterwards. Ah, <laughs> no. Uh, no, this oh. is steampunk. This is this is sci-fi steampunk technology, man. They got this. Uh, they he skitters up, and um, with a uh, gloved with a gloved finger traces a pattern along uh, one side of the obelisk. Uh, in response, several runes begin to glow from the top of the obelisk all the way down. Uh, these are the formula that I have heard meant that I have mentioned before, with several key pieces missing. Uh, uh, for Lisa, you recognize the uh, RNA and genetic sequences required for a, a, a universal vaccine base. Uh, Ensign Moore, you recognize the uh, physics needed to break the warp speed barrier, and Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt, you and Zax, you recognize the uh yeah the or bah, the basis of building a uh matter antimatter reactor naturally the uh, all of these are half completed missing several key formula and principles that they are obviously attempting to fill in this huh. is our test he coughs we will pass or we will die I've, we've gotten this far without outsiders' help, and the priest would be damned if we let outsiders carry us further. You understand that when you do travel out to the stars, they're going to be a, joining a community. We have been we have been traversing the stars. Then Our, you know there's so, folks out there. Yes, we we are aware of that, and to stand among them as equals. We do not wish to be artificially raised. Oh, I get that. But every now and then when someone stumbles, it's always nice to have someone to offer a hand to help them back up. <laughs> he shakes his body and his tail mimics the motion. No. He brings out a large book. Uh, worn uh, uh, th that is obviously very well worn with both age and atmospheric conditions uh, several of the early pages seem to have disintegrated completely he... is the title on the of the book like on the cover that I can see um do me uh let's how would this work uh insight plus command uh or insight science let's see how that would work you know what? Let's just roll a d20. Uh, or actually just a d6. Call high or low? Hi. 1d6. I'm no. afraid you're not able to catch a glimpse of the title. Uh, he, uh, he pulls it open, and even you can see a quick glance at the pages as they begin to unfurl. Um, several years worth of... Um, Ah, several years worth of uh, formulas, diagrams, a mishmash of uh, complex runes, basically. Uh, uh, Verillon seems very proud of this. Uh, he he opens up the and clasps the last or the last batch of pages. And under <clears throat> my leadership. We have filled in this many pages of the holy of the holy technologies. I will, and we've done it by ourselves, and we will continue to do so. And he continues to cough, and drops the book in a uh, spew of uh, in a seizure of coughing. I'll uh, walk over to pick up the book and I'll motion for the doctor to get closer and like can we at least look at you about your cough uh, I'm gonna run forward for the to look at the book uh, he doesn't respond but both Cathrice and Jakaris stand step forward and 
nod in a sense that you should probably come and have a look. If I see more go for the book, I'm like, I I give him like I give him the I give him the dad eyes. <laughs> like, I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, Moose did too. So good luck out dadding Moose. Moose <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did before I did. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm. I'm not picking up to look at it. I'm picking up to just like hand back to him, ah. and as like having like like nodding over for 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 Lizzie to come over. Okay, uh, so Moose, you grab the book before Moore does. I'm afraid, and <laughs> perfectly fine. Yep. <laughs> uh, uh, for Lisa, you you don't even need a tricorder to see that uh, Verillon is not doing very well. Um, blood and phlegm coming out at the same time is generally not a good idea or not a sign of a healthy constitution uh getting a look at his uh face assuming that the upper body is follows the same biological um basis as most humanoids uh he's extremely pale and his eyes his eyes are sunken back in his sockets his uh, skin is uh quite dry and it looks like a gallon of chapstick would not go awry. <laughs> oh god! Wow, that's a image. <laughs> um, for lack of a better way of putting it, Mister Verillin, you do not look good. Um, the healer cast has given me two months. Le more if I keep this restrictive suit on. I will do my duty until the end. Um, if you would allow, I mean, Starfleet has technology that could most likely heal your condition. Have you not been listening outside? <laughs> I more. do not want your help. You may not want it, but it sure looks like you need it. I'm also going to pipe up and go, what do you want to be remembered for? Dooming your people or finding the technology to save your people? Uh, at this point, I will. this is going to be an opposed role for Mr. Ferliza. So probably okay. your uh, presence plus command, mm -hmm. uh, unless you have doctor's orders. I do uh, not. Ah, uh, versus his presence plus command. Okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, oh wow, he has. You need to. You need. So he has three successes. Okay. You need four. To be. Yep. Able. Okay. Um. Let's okay. Ooh, my command is not great. Um, ooh. Uh, yeah. This seems like a good place to pop determination. Okay. Uh, what value are you popping? Um, new worlds means a new family. Ooh. I'm trying to make connections here and get them to listen to me. Yeah, well, that's that's a bit of a stretch, but I'll allow it. Yay. Um, I'll take two momentum for a third die. Okay. I'm surprised you're not using the treat anyone, even those who wish you harm. I think that would be a more... Uh, we'll say it's that one then. Sure. All right. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I really have a focus unless you want to count first contact here. No, this would more, this would not be first contact. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And submit. Okay, so that is five successes total. Huzzah! All right, you get one momentum. Out of the deal. And he's about to protest even harder, but his protestations die on his lips and replaced with a series of coughing so bad 
they actually rupture one of the seals of his suit. They're so... Um, okay, yeah. Um... Doctor, why don't you you and Specialist Zach get him into the bed of that truck and try to stabilize him from there in the atmosphere in which it's easier to deal with? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was, that was the plan, yeah. Um, in case you need it, uh, looking at that obelisk where the medical formula was, was it one of those things where it's like, it was a complete string of runes, but I can tell there's stuff missing. Uh, yeah, so basically it's a extremely complex fill-in-the-blanks. Okay, got it. Um, the, the, okay. the characters are unfamiliar to you, but the uh, chemical, or how a chemical compound is, you know, diagrammed out is pretty universal. Okay. Um, before I go and, like, start trying to treat the, uh, Varillon, I'll, like, either in the dirt somewhere or just, like, find a way to communicate, uh, I'll hand it, I guess, to Hadrix, since he's the one in command here, uh, like, the rest of that formula, not, this is the best I gotta, I gotta make sure this guy is gonna survive. Of course, definitely. Stabilize them. Do what you need to do. We'll see what we can do from this on this side here. Okay. I take care yeah. of him, but I'm not taking the pointy ends. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Uh, uh, between all between uh, Forliza, the two oral priests, Zach. Uh, you guys are able to. Uh, sort of fireman carry drag uh, Virilin back to the uh, back to the stabilized truck leaving the rest of you staring at this oblong pillar mm, tricorder skin yeah this is exactly what I was thinking <laughs> <laughs> alright insight plus science uh, insight plus science or insight plus engineering uh, depending which one takes the lead, we'll get you different answers. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three. I'll take the lead because I have linguistics as a focus. Okay. And okay. cautious science. Uh, experimental technology for focus? Wait, do I get a focus as a, as a assist? Yes, focus for assists are a thing, and I will let experimental technology work. <clears throat> I'm going to use one of the momentums for a third die since I have cautious. Sure thing. And we're going to re-roll that complication. Aww. Put, put. Uh, okay, so that's two successes from Moore. We need one from Reinhardt. And <laughs> Reinhardt nice. gives, two. gives two. Okay, so that's one momentum right back. No net gain of momentum. No. No net loss either. No net loss. Okay, so uh, science from the obelisk. Uh it matches point for point any other preserver techno any other preserver artifact you have seen in terms of energy and uh, in terms of the energy that it produces uh, the runes on its surface are uh, appear to be only temporary pro projected from some form of internal light source uh, you can see that th there is a significant amount of um, uh, that audio equipment or detection, uh, which is probably why the priests were singing. Uh, as for the for the runes, for the most part, it's pretty smooth. Uh, there is the uh, runes at the base of the of the pillar, written in Scorpi, um, translated say uh, the preservers have ensured that the that your species uh, be allowed to survive. Uh, fairly simple, and it is said that is engraved on all four sides. Uh, it appears to be drawing a significant amount of power from uh, subsurface, uh, but from the method of generation or the power source is not really included in your scans. Uh, and also that the uh, our moose, you pick this up, 
that the particles emanate or the uh, particles that emanate from it match th uh, yeah, match those that were left behind uh, when your shuttle systems were surgically removed. Hmm. So this thing is able to take audio input, though, right? Uh, seemingly. Seemingly. I'm just gonna um, test what type of audio input it can accept. So I'm just gonna do a little blast of different bits of sounds at um, a higher frequency. Okay. Just to I'm see how it reacts. Give you up. I'm never gonna play. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm gonna fill in the blanks of uh, matter antimatter ah. calculations. Okay. Okay. Easy enough. Uh, by using the audio input, it takes a few seconds for the structure to decode what you're trying to send. But it accepts it fairly easily. Uh, Commander Hadrix, Ensign Moore, you are you notice as the uh, the second set of runes begin to complete, uh, they go f or they go from a sol from a you know solid red color. Uh, as it gets closer and closer to the complete, the hue turns closer and closer to pink. And once it finally reaches pink. Uh, you hear a small chime, and the pillar and those runes disappear. Upon hearing the chime, uh, those who are back at the truck, uh, not Varelin, who has gone unconscious, uh, Jakaris oh. and Kethrys both um, turn around in place and look on with uh, anticipation. Oh, oh, that worked. That's an intriguing turn of events. It's surprising that it worked in any language. I feared it would only either use a preserver or the native uh, Scorpi. Hmm. Well, let's see what, what else we can do to solve the remainder of this. Well, before we go any further, I do want to let you know that... Um... I'm picking up the same type of energy traces that took a warp core in a shuttle. I have an idea. I think it needs power. I'm inclined to agree with you. It might, well, and I'm wondering if there's more obelisks around the planet. Uh, the Nighthawk's uh, previous scans indicate that this is the only obelisk. Yeah, but we can't trust a Nighthawk. They're not as sciencey as us. <laughs> well, we're cooler only, than them. Is this the only obelisk note? Like, did they do like um? So, under crew, feet? how's it going? I'm just checking. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I didn't watch Nighthawk, did they do undersea scans? Because it could be that I mean, when it was seated, there was an ocean sink like that in the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't remember how thorough their scans were, but this is the GM basically saying this is the only thing on planet. Okay. You know, you guys are. The Federation has been in this sector of space for a year, and they've had an entire team focused solely on this in, this environment for about eight months now. So yeah, you guys, there's there is only one obelisk, and it's here. Um, and to come up, and uh, since Moose didn't probably watch the Nighthawk episodes either, uh, the last mission. That the Nighthawk was here, they actually repaired the power systems. Oh, I did. Oh. I watched the whole thing unfold when uh, the security officer went to go break the Prime Directive. Ah, ah yes. With, ti with Tiny Togi. <laughs> yes, okay, never mind then. You, you were watching. Good on ya. But yes, uh, their last mission was, I believe as a result, the obelisk was fully powered. So then with everything going on... With the warden, that's probably probably caused us to depower itself, yeah, or be. disruption in the power supply. Could be. So, uh, while I'm in the truck here, uh, can I safely assume that Varillon's probably going to need surgery 
of some sort. Yeah, he's going to need a regenerator, the likes of which can only probably be found on either on a starship or at least in the Healer's Guild uh, main hospitals. Um, I'll wave over at the two Scorby that are still there, and whoever comes over, uh, he'll kind of like, uh, give that information, just like, um, he's going to need some pretty extensive surgery, either, I'm not sure if your Healer's Guild has a regenerator of some sort, but I know the Concordia has one, I know... I'm sure in the eyes of your culture, we have overstepped many boundaries, but I know for a fact that what the Concordia has can save him. I'm gonna get him. Jakara snods and his tail bobs up and down in time with the head. Uh, for the last several months, your your Federation has done nothing but help us. And I wish that you could help more however and he his uh tail bobs down and bonks of virilin's unconscious form this he has become more and more stubborn over the past several months whether or not he will accept your help that's up to i cannot guarantee i would want you to help him he is a very intelligent and very capable priest once you break through the uh, carapace that seems to engulf his head. Well, it looks like I'll have to try and do some convincing then. Um, how close do you guys think you're, you are to figuring all this out? Uh, Jakar shrugs. What they ask for is very complicated. And our, we understand that one of the questions is medical in nature. One is physics and astrophysics, the other being technological. We are uncertain as to the final goal of each, but we are attempt that is our purpose to discern the discern their meaning, pass them along to the guilds that can best solve them, and then pass the answers back to the obelisk. I see. Um Commander Hadrix, how's it going? Well, it's stable so far. What we just need to do is figure out these last two bits. Why don't you come and try to deal with the medical side of things, and I can keep an eye on Virillin. Okay. And, okay. If he, and if he becomes conscious, I'll try to reason with him. Okay. Um, all right. Do the senior officer swap a -roo. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, so, you have a means of transmitting data. Question is, do you do it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for Lisa, you're with a little bit of assistance from Moore and and Reinhardt. You're able to transmit the medical. Uh, sequence up to the into the obelisk obelisk chimes once again it goes from red to pink and lets out a chime uh, Jakaris turns your turns all of his attention away from Hadrix and back to the obelisk well there's the medical side of it Commander okay. Hatrix, you can take over. I'm going to keep watching Virillan. Sounds good, Doctor. And as the two, uh, as the, uh, as Hadrix, you turn to leave, uh, Virillan's claw reaches up and grabs you. It's not very strong. You could pry yourself out easily enough. 
Um, it is hard enough that the serrated edges are uh, puncture your suit. Oh, I should mention that I am spending threat to do this. Um, it basically tears open a good amount of uh, tears along your midsection of the suit. Uh, inside your your suit begins to blare several uh, several forms of distress, indicating uh, severe or rapid depressurization, foreign contaminants, foreign biotoxins. Uh, you know, that sort of fun stuff that nobody ever wants to hear. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I, going to just get myself to slodge from him, but not in the way you're thinking. Uh-oh. I'm, no, I'm going to look at him and say, Varillan, we are doing what we can to save you and your people. So just let us help you as Starfleet has helped your kind, your race before. Okay. Um, once again, this is going to be an opposed check. Uh, if you have an opposed presence command versus his presence command. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you need one success because he is apparently not feeling this shit anymore. <laughs> oh, and just for giggles, let's see. I'm going to use my composure focus. Okay. A good focus to have when a, a large scorpion claw engulfs you. And how about we just go ahead and say that, even though, I, well, I probably won't need it. So, never mind, I'm going to hold off. Okay. You don't oh, need yeah. It? That is I was going to say, uh, I was going to say I was going to pop my determination, but. Yeah, don't need it. That would be uh, three successes. So three momentum. He lets out a, a very wet sigh, releases the clamp, and decides that tis better to live with wounded pride than to die. I'm glad you're able to see things our way. I just want to be able to help you as the entirety of Starfleet wants to. And just give him for giggles because I want to be able to use it. I'm using my infectious nature talent, which means I can spend two momentum to improve the outlook and attitude of those around them. It provides one of two effects the characters considered to have an advantage in subsequent social interactions with the individual affected by this talent. So I'm using it on him. Okay. That is, that sounds like a good advantage to have. Cool. So basically, um, yeah. You'll have the advantage, and we'll play it out as necessary. All right. And can you do me a favor and make me a um, fitness plus medicine test, please? And because I have enough threat, I'm going to increase complication range 18 to 20. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. If you have, like, constitution or immune system or strong physical appear body something like that would work yeah no nothing like that um composure. i'm gonna ask a, i'm gonna ask a real weird question call yeah uh can i assist him because i see this tear in his suit and uh, all this stuff not right now okay cool cool, cool. or if how about two cool. like isn't the back of the truck got plenty of oxygen oh yeah it does but this is when you're he's stepping out okay or are you stepping out? I guess I should have asked that question first. No, but you know what? No, mm. no, 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 no. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself because I want that test rolled anyways. Because I remember what I wanted to do. Okay, Sorry. how about composure? Because, mm. you know, if it's something to go with what's going on, I'm stay trying to stay composed. Okay, okay. Let's, yeah. Okay. One success and that's not Once. an 18. Yeah. Okay. That. Well, I should have said it was a difficulty too. Sorry. Um. I don't think I gave you the difficulty before you rolled. My bad. Uh. Yeah. So that's fine. Nothing. You know. You take a couple breaths. You realize that oxygen is still in the truck and you're breathing it fine. So obviously there's nothing to worry about, right? 
<laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Special Zach, you realize that his uh, suit is sort of torn to shreds. And for Lisa, as you depressurize in the truck's compartment and make your way back, you also realize that Hadrix's suit is severely compromised. Oh, that that's nice. Uh-huh. Um... Eddie, you might want to take him for not go out there yet. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree with you. Well, um... You are the commanding officer here, so, um... Take my suit. I'm... I was going to offer mine, but... <laughs> Specialist, that is very kind of you. Yes, I will borrow your suit. Okay, it smells of whiskey. Not entirely sure where it came from, but I'm headcanning it. That and that... ironically, burnt hair is what I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> Even though your beard has not caught fire this episode, it still smells of right. burnt hair. Yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, I've snuck a few of those smelling salts in there. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a bit cramped, you know, a suit built for Tellarite, not quite up to uh, Talaxian uh, biology or anatomy or physicology, whatever it is. But yes, you are able to fit and wander around. Verillin, is there anything else that we should know about? Virilin whispers uh, uh, because you have the advantage you don't have to roll this any further uh, Virilin coughs and sputters and says took your people held below took your power to okay th okay thank you and I just kind of nod to for Lisa to follow me out of the truck ah leaving Virilin with the wonderful bedside manner that his specialist Zach <laughs> a very naked Specialist Zach because he has no bio suit on. Well, I'm assuming uh, he's that... got his uniform. Well, you know what I mean. You <laughs> yeah, know what I, I mean. Know, I know. No, no, it's Enterprise. I'm just wearing the <laughs> space boxers. <laughs> I'm not even going to go that way. Anyways, okay. So the two of you step outside. Uh, joining up with Moose and Moore, um, looking at them and be like. Our people are here. They're them, and our power has been taken. Taken, and it is underground. It is under here somewhere, according to Verillon. Hmm. I'm going to make a scan for um, any. Um, actually, I'm going. To, hmm. So I'm able to communicate with the statue in terms of sounds. I want to find out if I can access its programming, like if I can like tap into its programming. Okay. Um, this is going to be a control plus engineering. Um, this is going to be a difficulty of. You know what? I'll spend the threat to increase the comp the difficulty to five, because to my knowledge, Starfleet has yet to actually properly interface itself with a preserver technology. So, difficulty okay. of five. Um, you can be assisted by Moore or one other person. Can I assist with my reverse engineering focus? Uh, what does that do again? <laughs> it's just a focus. It's just a focus. Oh, I have. focus. Focus, my bad. Um, no, this is a bit too complex for that. If you had alien technology or ancient civilizations or something like that, that might work better. But I mean, I have I have linguistics and visual and culture. <laughs> oh, what a interesting uh focus uh, was, that, was that your hobby there are, uh no linguistics is the hobby ah. um which is where i have the like my phd in in linguistics 
Um, Bajoran culture is from the um, be the track of being raised. Um, I, it was an academic project where I discovered an artifact out in Bajor. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Sounds like a fun story. I can't wait to someone to get you to tell that. Anyways, the... Yeah, I will let... I'll let reverse engineering work. All right. Uh, determination. Necessity is the mother of invention. That works. And... Focus. Experimental technology. Jerry-rigging. I'll let experimental tech work. And it's okay if I take the last bit of momentum there for an extra dice, guys. Good by me. Uh, it'd be two for a third die. Yep. Yeah. Right. Let's let's hope. Let's do this. Right. Oh, laddie. <laughs> Engineer. Can you pop open a cold one with those claws? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. four. Four successes from Moose. Am I also doing control engineering? Uh, yes. Okay. And yeah, who does it? So the two of you working in concert, uh, speaking back and forth in quick blurts of techno babble are able to interface with are able to most like in most likely what is the first ever complete interface with a preserver obelisk or at least uh, the most complete to date whether or not it, you have con full control over the inter over the device or not has yet to be seen but you're able to at least get past the login prompt <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, okay. Yep, your your tricorders are immediately filled, or immediately have their buffers overloaded with uh, information that will take a very long time to sort through. Um, it's like reading a, you know, those uh, movies where they try to show like a hacker screen and they just have s lines and lines of text that hypothetically go too fast to read. But real when you pause it, you realize it's only just like an HTML script, which is hilarious. But yes, something <laughs> along something along those lines burst through your tricorders. Okay. Um, I'm searching for anything to do with um, matter um, conversion. Okay. Uh, you uh, going through it? You see that that. Uh, you stumble upon a series of, or a, a yeah, a an index of technology and related technology. It's sort of like once they've achieved something, or if, once they've answered a specific question or filled in a specific blank, or you know filled out a formula. In this case, matter conversion. Then it spits out all sorts of other technological information such as plasma manifolds um, yeah, plasma manifolds and all the other pieces needed to build at least a warp 2 engine oh I'm, I'm looking for um, access to a transporter system oh that transporter system my apologies yes um, uh, you're <laughs> yeah, my bad uh, once you, once you uh, re modify the search parameters uh, you're able to find a series of uh, activities performed by the obelisk. Uh, the obelisk, after you know, filtering out a bunch of the useless jargon that always happens on either side of these things, with the help of Ensign Moore looking over your shoulder, uh, you see that it uh, that it became triggered approximately two weeks ago. Um, but it detected the use of genetic cloning technology locked uh, searching f uh, searching for or scanning for other technologies uh, intruder or non-native technology uh, detected non non-native technology compared to current technological levels found to be in excess Technology is banned. Technology has yet to be unlocked. Species preservation or species preservation course must be undeterred at this stage. Detecting other 
illicit technologies. And it appears to be scanning for several days. Detection, uh, uh, alerting, alerting of potential uh, unwanted individuals. Alert. Alert. Former, uh, other to, uh, other techno, other, on um, other locked technologies discovering or discovered entering atmosphere. Removing technologies. I explained that. Hey, Commander. It seems this obelisk is literally enforcing its own prime directive. That's intriguing, and when did it start occurring? Yeah, about seven days ago. Seven to fourteen. <laughs> A fortnight. And yet, Starfleet has been on here for months. So we need to find out if there's been any correlation to that. Well, if I figure this out, you want to go for a ride? Sure. I'm going I'm... to try and initiate transport. Oh, this will be fun. Okay. Um, oh, daring Jesus. plus engineering. Uh, uh, this will just be a difficulty two challenge since you've already made your way inside the obelisk. Um, Experimental technology? Yeah, I'll let that work. I'm going to probably clamp down on that in the future, but yes. <clears throat> Question. Yes. Engineering tricorder. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Okay, difficulty one. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, with the engineering tricorder, would that made our previous task a difficulty four instead of a five? No, that, no, that would have been... Nope, that was GM basically spent dumping most of his remaining threat. Ah. Makes sense. Yep. Let it ride. Okay, uh, sorry, is that just, did you just roll that during engineering? Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's only one degree success, that's what you need, which will, so for a split second you're not entirely certain it worked, and then without even feeling the typical effect of a transporter beam, you find oh. yourselves here. Uh, let me just zoom out and make things look nice. Is Forliza with us? Is he still with the... Um, I forget where Forliza people. went in all this. <laughs> uh, Hadrix had me come out of... The yeah, he room. did have you come out. So, yeah, Hadrix, you've been brought... Or, Forliza, you've been brought along for the ride. There. Pay no attention to the other people in the backdrop. <laughs> it is... <laughs> a, the uh... ever-silent extras in the background. <laughs> so... It's the cleaning crew. Ah. Uh, even preservers need to have their technology preserved. They're all playing Galaga. Yep. <laughs> huh. I didn't realize that this place would have janitors. Uh, do you know how hard it is to find cool set pieces? Anyways, so... <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, you have beamed into a cavern. You're not entirely sure where it is. Um, but you do know that the temperature is much colder than where you once were. Uh, it appears to be solid rock. Uh, you feel a pressure pushing upon your suits, pushing them closer to your body. Um, so wherever you are, it's most likely deep underground, or underwater perhaps. Uh, looking around, there is a series of um, plasma conductors pulsing in a, in a spiral, leading their way up to a gigantic sphere of glowing green energy. Um, below this sphere is several pods. Uh, they appear to be scorpy sized um, but several of them are containing, uh, or several of them are currently active, uh, with inhabitants obviously inhabiting them. I should say there are 13 of them. Um, stasis well, pods of some sort? Uh, sorry, what was that, Moose? Um, while this is happening, I'm just going to make sure we're all intact, and then I'm just going to start searching uh, the system for any scans, if it's detecting weather anomalies. I want to see if it's able to either correct the weather issues or if it's causing it. 
it it appears that the it uh, just doing a quick glance, i.e., no rolls for it, you're not able to see that there is an algorithm to determine the planetary condition. Okay. So, uh, yep, so you do see various uh, pods. Um, I sh so, uh, Zax, there's a, from your perspective, there is a large, or a loud flash of green from outside the truck. Uh, you look around, um, and you see the two uh, intact Scorpi uh, skittering around, wondering what the hell just happened, and your crewmen are gone. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Oh, Zax. I like that you that this is normal for Zax. <laughs> I'm sitting in the thing watching the di watching the dying scorpion creature in face boxers. Uh, there's not much I'm going to be able to go do. <laughs> we just like out and go Oh, this is a typical Thursday. <laughs> right, yeah. No, remember, <laughs> remember, I still think it's Tuesday for the head injury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. No, I that's mean... when you go, wait, miscellaneous transport accidents only happen on Thursdays. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyways, back to the uh, pod people yeah. scene. <laughs> now what? So I, I say, I figure we look at the pods and look to see if our people are inside of them. Well, you don't have to make a medical check to see that. Yep, there are 13 uh, non uh humanoid, and the one whose token I actually have made, that of Dr. Julia Myers, the research team, is dead center. She is unconscious, and her skin is... Uh, appears to have been iced over there's a little indicator over top of the pod which is odd because no one's come down here to read them in centuries it seems but it is blinking uh it is blinking with her bio signs they appear stable for Lisa lets out like a huge sigh of relief well like okay so they're all stable but we don't know what happens if we Try to get them out. Um, Lieutenant Commander Moose, um, can you try to figure out what might happen if we try to get these people out? Do you think they'll be safe? I guess is my biggest question. I'm not a doctor. I don't. Guess, my question is: There a security protocol in place with these pods? Yep. Take a look. You can't yeah, look. Of... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, a moose. Oh, I was just gonna take a look in the software, see what I can access for uh, uh, okay. cryostasis. Uh, at this point, you're getting kind of familiar with their indexing system. Uh, Insight Engineering, difficulty one. And Spencer, you're coming across awfully quiet as of recent. Oh, hold on. <clears throat> I might just be farther from my mic. I don't know. Um. Oh, that actually just sounded better. Maybe okay. you just have to lean a bit closer or something. Yeah. Okay. I know it's getting late. We're almost done here. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So, Moose, uh, you realize that there is a simple on-off switch. Uh, pods go on, person gets frozen. Pod goes off, person is unfrozen in a... And it follows a very specific checklist uh, to ensure that it's done so safely. Okay, so... If it looks safe, I'm going to turn it off. All right. Let them, let them find out. Uh, you turn it off, and a series of uh, rhythmic beepings be uh, cease. And for Lisa, your heart stops just a split second until the 
a hiss of the cryogenics pods begin to emerge or begin to sound the lids pop open and one by one the uh, familiar team uh, stumble out uh, you can see that they're still wearing their bios uh, their biohazard suits but because they were inside a facility their helms are obviously not here okay um dr myers yeah uh, she puts on a bit of a panicked look uh and, and i'm just like as soon as he feels like it's okay it's okay uh and i'll put you know put my hands up in that non-threatening uh i'm lieutenant commander for lisa i went to uss concordia um that is lieutenant commander reinhardt this is my commanding officer on this mission, Commander Hadrix, and that is Ensign Moore. We're here to help. Uh, she spits out what appears to be about a cup of water um, before coming to understand that she is not going to die. And she, uh, before stepping forward to uh, take your hand, she quickly looks around, does a quick count of the others, and she goes, where's the rest? Are they okay? We we have them on a shuttle. They're f they're safe. No, oh, good. Okay. <sighs> I I don't know what happened. We had just begun to initial we just begun to initialize the cloning of new uh, plant samples for uh, early reintroduction to their to their environment. And after oh. that. <laughs> Uh, that, and he'll just point up to the big old orb, be like, didn't like that. It detected technology that wasn't part of the cycle, as it were. She, uh, for the first time, she realizes what the heck is above her, and instead of cowing away from it, she, her eyes grow wide, and she fumbles for a tricorder that is not at her belt. I will hand her mine. And she immediately begins taking readings. Huh. I mean, we always assumed that there was more preserver technology around. They can't control an entire... They can't do what, they've, what we've seen done with a simple obelisk. No. Must be hidden. Anyways. That's... And she'll pass it right back. Uh, another time. At least now we know we're... Now we know it's here. We can study it as we continue to figure out how to save the planet yes i'm sorry and she takes she takes a step forward and shakes uh, commander hadrix's hand C commander you're with starfleet thank you so much oh he just stepped away for afk oh my bad uh neelix is obviously dumbfounded by her beauty uh, <laughs> uh she will then uh, shake all of your hands in tow in turn thank you so much it's our pleasure. Yeah. I've got an idea. Might be a dumb one. Might not no. be. But it's able to scan, so it has sensors. I'm thinking of programming it to detect the weather conditions and then allowing a whitelist to happen until the weather conditions are stabilized. It's basically allowing us to do our work, help the planet, and then once that's done, it'll start targeting the technology again. That way, the Scorpia kept on their path, and at the same time, we're able to help them. I like the idea. Alright, that's easy enough to do. I mean, you have almost root access at this point, but this is the first time I'm actually trying to enter data instead of just modifying it. Uh, so this... Uh, I know it's getting late, so we're not going to make an extended task out of this. Uh, you instead... sure got a nick of time in Miracle Worker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, of... it, it might actually go quicker to do it as an ta extended task. <laughs> oh, dang. With, uh... with those two talents, yeah, it might actually go quicker. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be a control plus engineering. And... The, and... Can I... Yep. Could I say Darren because I am writing alien okay. code? Yeah, let's do Darren. Let's do that. That would be more fun. Um, and this is going to be a difficulty of three. 
um, Moore, you're doing a very similar one with uh, Daring plus Science, uh, difficulty three, because both of you are, it'll take both of you working in concert to get this done. Oh boy, we're both doing that. Okay. Yes, yes you are. Uh, going to take that last momentum. <laughs> do you want it or do you want me to take it? I mean, one of you can do it first and then, you know, see if you generate momentum and then the other one can do it, but yeah. That's true. I have cautious science and I have a computer's focus. Okay, now if you got cautious, because uh, what are you looking at aiming? Because right now I'm looking at a 15. I'm aiming at for a 12 with a 4 crit range. A 5 crit range for me. <clears throat> so, I mean, cautious, cautious is the only reason momentum would be important for me. You have a higher crit range, so you have a better chance of critting. Yeah. Okay, my only question is, and I've never used this, what? How could I use my advisor talent? Uh, what does that do again? Uh, when you assist another character using <clears throat> your command discipline, the character being assisted may re-roll a d20. I think that's a good idea. With you standing behind going, rah, 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 go team. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so who's taking the lead then? Oh, no, you this... t you do the you do your role first because you have a better chance of uh, succeeding past what is required to get more momentum. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we have Hadrix. He's doing the rah rah to me. So I have, I I still get a reroll then of something botches. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Right. Uh, do you want just two or do you want to take the, uh, momentum? Uh, you keep the momentum because then you have cautious. Okay. Well, wait, are you actually able to do anything with that if you're assisting, though? He's not assisting. I, I have my own role. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He has his own role. Yeah, okay. You're, okay, yeah, okay. This is two separate tests. So okay. if you take the momentum, you get a third die. If you generate any momentum, I'll be able to use it. Okay, in that case, then I'm going to give the GM one threat. Okay. Okay. I'm immediately going there. to... Sp nah, I'm not going to spend it. <laughs> We're near the end. Actually, no, yeah. I will spend it. Okay, uh, that is two successes so far. I believe you get a re-roll. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought Hadrix oh. had to make an assist roll first. Oh, yes, Hadrix, please make your assist. Uh, what am I just doing? Command and... Uh, I believe it's Presence Command. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just doing what? The My normal 2d20 yeah. for that? Uh, 1d20. You're assisting. Gotcha. Okay. There you go. You got that, so I believe that means the moose gets a re-roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he gets... Okay, so... We have... We gained a momentum in there. I believe that is how it works, yes. So you gain one momentum, and then you turn it right around and... Well, we had a moment... yeah. momentum. So you that, had a that... momentum, spent it, got it back. No, we didn't spend it. He gave you threat. Oh, yes, my bad. Uh, so, um, Hadrix, I believe you can assist again for a similar thing for, or, or is that only once per? All it says is whenever you assist another character using your command, that's okay. it. Doesn't... Cool. So, All right. the moment that's out here is the one that we had before, so that's yeah. for my third die. Mm -hmm. And I have a computer's focus. Huh. And... and I'm going to re-roll... Yeah. from cautious mm -hmm. uh, Hadrix uh, one of your eyes begins to itch <laughs> and that's enough uh, successes so well oh, that's no, the, no, 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 no. the one I just did was yeah. the re-roll yeah. of cautious yeah. now I get a re-roll for advisor right correct yep he gets a 20 Okay. Nice. Oh, actually, I, we get that momentum back. Yes, you do. Okay, so the two of you spend approximately a half hour basically encoding a weather scheme or a series of weather sensors and a whitelist of allowed technologies. And with um, Miss Moore looking over your shoulder and providing you with detailed specifications of the entire project front to end, you right. manage to or you compile what you believe to be a very complete list of allowed technologies. 
effects, and I'm also going to give it like a window, so like the moment the weather clears up, Techna is going to get taken away. Like it'll give us a few days. Yeah. Yeah. Once it's achieved stability and you know meets all these various criteria, that yep. A very interesting solution to this problem. Well thought. Nice. <laughs> I'm also going to beam back the stuff the thing stole from our ships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so up on the bridge of the. Uh, of the USS Concordia, uh, your beta shift engineering department, who's been called in to try to figure out what the hell to do, uh, Captain reports to you that, um, well, sir, everything's back. Um, EPS conduits have been restored. All the deuterium's back in the tank. Antimatter's been transported back. Do we, we have, have communications with the planet? Uh, yes, sir. All right, Commander Hendricks. Uh, you, Captain. Uh, nope, you don't hear that. Um, you hear uh, Primrose on the shuttle. Uh, no, actually, ah. you, get, you get Zach, because it's far more ah. funnier to talk to yourself. <laughs> Go. <laughs> no, you can talk to Primrose. Primrose on the shuttle is... You can talk to Zach. You make yeah. him do it. <laughs> <laughs> Too tired to argue with self. <laughs> uh, Primrose, uh, you're, you're on the shuttle yeah. uh, doing whatever it is the Togalau do during downtime. And all of a sudden, your comm link, the shuttle's comm spit to life. Oh, oh um. Away team, oh. report. Um. I'm. Is the stuff back in the shuttle that was gone? Yes, yes it is. Yes. It, it's a bit of a, you know, still an assembly required situation, but yes. Um, this garden has found that what was lost in the shuttle has now been returned, Captain. You lost, okay. As I say, it seemed you lost something too. Yes. Um, this garden should probably try and make contact with the away team, and I'll try I'm... and establish contact real quick. Uh, Zach, you get a response from, or you get a hail from the shuttle. Hi, what do you want? <laughs> this is Crewman Pimrose. How is the Chief. away team? And I, of course, am patching the captain through so they can hear this conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, be honest, I don't know. Uh, big green oh. light, they all disappeared. I'm stuck in me little skimmies and with a <laughs> giant cockroachy thing. Um... Do you, can you care to explain? Uh, I think I just did. <laughs> okay. Oh. Have Commander Hendix report to me when he gets a chance. And calm. <laughs> Blam it, Captain. Always I cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, that um, shakes that level of Shakespearean dialogue is goes unheard by the individuals who are <laughs> deep below the planet or the right. planets. Are... To be or not to be, that is the question. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> All right. Um, what's so this? Yeah. So you guys spend some time. You have a whitelist and. You have pretty much more access to a preserver sh shrine than anyone has ever had access to before. Damn, Starfleet's good. Good job, boss. I can't wait to read the report. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, after a little while of, you know, standing around looking impressed, uh, Dr. Myers approaches, so... You can get us out, right? I mean, you got us. You got in here, obviously, and I haven't seen a staircase or turbo lift. 
Oh, we, we crawled be through. Able to. Crawled through? I yeah. don't think... I don't think this is the best time for humor, Commander. I think it's the perfect time for humor. There's always time for humor. Thank you, Ensign. I just smile. <laughs> Let's get ourselves I'm out a of good here. Ensign. I'm a good Ensign. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I think it'll be interesting and funny, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to, since I'm connected to this device and its sensors, I'm going to beam us all to the ship. Okay, does that include the people on the planet already? Like, Zach and Primrose in the shuttle, or just all of you guys here? Just all of us here. Okay. Oh, gee. Uh, Primrose doesn't want to be alone on her fl shuttle flight back. That makes perfect sense. Uh, so, back on the bridge. <clears throat> so, um, Captain, you're... Uh, trying to make small talk with the uh, beta shift folks who yeah. have yet to be populated all of a sudden there is a flash of green and there are now uh, thir uh 13 plus 4 is 19 people on the bridge 17 uh yeah, yeah, 17 them. my bad math not good no i was yeah. right there uh, 13 people plus 13 14, 15, yep 17 see this is yeah fine 17 on the bridge <laughs> <laughs> Good night, <laughs> folks. We'll see you next week. Lieutenant Legos, <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Legos immediately draws his phaser. I just hey, look at him. Lieutenant, it's, it's okay. Lieutenant, stand down. I'll just say something. Don't shoot me. <laughs> if you're going to shoot me, shoot my right leg first. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Do it when I'm not around. I don't want to be hit by shrapnel. Commander? Captain, we've managed to help out the Scorpio home world a little bit and be able to find all of our people. Excellent. I I have I have a surgery to perform, I think. Yes. You do? Yes, Captain, we've got um, at least one Scorpio that needs dire medical assistance plus we have at l our other uh, seven remaining scientists plus our couple of crewmen also down on there that we need to transport up as soon as possible. All right, no problem. Uh, transport uh, direct to Med Bay and get the rest of the crew back. I'm gonna go prep for surgery and Ferlis is gonna walk off the bridge. Mm. Uh, Hadrix, you notice Forliza leaving and just absentmindedly uh, scratch the back of your neck, which appears to be in flamings ever so slightly. Uh, Doctor, I think I'm going to um, join you there for a minute. Okay. Okay. As we, as we get into the turbo lift, it's like, I think I'm having a reaction to something, and you just see, like, the outer white of his right eye actually kind of expanding out almost like a balloon. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, we'll take care of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's, that is, that's new. <laughs> ah, Talaxian allergic responses. <laughs> Dr. Myers, I here. presume. <laughs> Captain, um, <laughs> thank you to you and your crew for uh, saving us. I was unaware that there was a new Starfleet vessel operating in the area. Uh, as the ranking member of the environmental restoration team, I would like to s pass on our gratitude and request a shuttle ride back down to the surface as soon as possible. It seems that we still have work ahead of us. Absolutely, Doctor. Uh, after you've rested and cleaned up and get something to eat for you and your people, I would like to have a little talk with you over... Uh, what was going on down there, and we'll get you right back to finishing your job. Of course, Captain. And with that, uh, she, uh, uh, Lieutenant Lagos offers, uh, ah, Lieutenant Lagos gestures towards the turbo lift that Ferliza and Hadrix just walked off, and the t and her and her team follow him out. <laughs> Uh, 
There's some more. Dun, dun, dun. Have any fun up here? <laughs> uh, Moose, um, I need you to take a look at the uh, engine room when you get its moment. We've had some situation <laughs> while you were gone. Sounds Miss like it was a universal thing. Missing deuterium. EPS relays vanishing, and then suddenly yeah, pretty appear. Much. Yeah. Just gonna hold up the tricorder. Happens all the, happens all the time. <laughs> you, you know, no matter what era it is in, it's all the same stuff. It's wearing just a different outfit. <laughs> ah. And on that note, I believe that's a good place to end for the night. Ooh. So, I would like to thank everyone for saving the Scorpi. I was becoming quite attached to them and didn't want them to die off due to environmental degradation. So thanks for that. Uh, so, as always, thank you to my players for playing. Thank you to everyone to watch. We will be back next Friday with another set of hijinks. And until then, bye-bye. And again. Later. <laughs>